my name is Alex Zahad. I'm the creative lead. Basically, today's stream is going to be me basically rambling about the world setting for this game. Um, of course, like one of the reasons why we're a little bit uh, hesitant on giving too much information is because we wanted to keep a lot of that as the kind of stuff that you discover in the game. But it's also cool to talk about it now so you get a better sense of what we're going for. And also the other reason is because things are subject to change when we get to a more final draft of the story. Um, but a lot of the basic essence of it should probably retain. Uh, so that's basically why we haven't divulged too much information yet. But today seems like a good time to start, start on that. So what I'll probably do before answering questions is um, go over like some of the basic notes because I'm sure that might help either at least answer some of the questions or spur more questions. It's probably going to end up being both, uh, especially if I end up describing it in a you know, complicated or convoluted way. Uh, but I'll start with an intro that I wrote down. Several years in the past, a goddess of destruction named Kala landed on the planet. She began traveling across the land, consuming all in her path. Many tried to fight Kala, but were not able to stop her. Kala learns about Sumeru, a massive cosmic mountain at the middle of the world, and uh, realizes that if she takes over that mountain, she'll be able to destroy the entire planet. Learning more about, about the nature of Kala, a hero known only as the Traveler, manages to stop her with the use of a special spell. Kala had managed to, Kala had managed to enter the base of Sumeru, but was not able to progress any further. Whether the spell truly worked or not is uh, debatable but the effects of Kala's appearance on the world is undeniable. Recently, it seems that forces aligned with Kala are gaining strength. Is the seal beginning to wake, weaken? Um, I'll go over more about the, world's, the world as a whole as opposed to the main plot. Uh, sorry about the noise. There's, uh, we have neighbors in the, in the office. Um, but yeah, you know, just to give you a little bit of context, in terms of like the trailer video, for example, you probably noticed that giant pan starting from the village that was burnt towards like that crazy creature at the top with multiple arms. That is one of Kala's forms. So just to give you a sense of like what, what, what we've shown so far. Also, an interesting note would be Sumeru, the gigantic mountain that's, that I mentioned just now, um, is also visible in that shot where uh, Ajna is looking at the temple. You can kind of see it far off in the distance. It's, it is massive. It is like. It's like it would go into space, basically, like it's the equivalent. So it's like a gigantic pillar in the center of the world. Um, I guess I can start with some of the basic overarching structure of this setting. So the world that Indivisible is set in, I have been calling Loka. It is part of a multiverse. Basically, it is one world system of many in just a collective, the concept of like there are an infinite amount of worlds, an infinite amount of universes. And this is one of many. Kala herself has consumed several universes before this. So she's gone through several world systems prior to landing on Loka. So that, that's also part of the reason for that context. Um, she is she's the type to travel between different realities and consumes them along the way. Loka can be divided into several regions, as I've mentioned before, Sumeru, and the mainland that uh, the Lokans, the human, the equivalent to humans in this world, Lokans, live on land. You know, like it would be like what we would cons consider the normal world. And then in the center of that world is this gigantic mountain that's shaped like an hourglass that kind of goes up and down. Basically, it's uh, this kind of cosmological divine mountain. It's got heavens above and hells below. And um, below the human world is also the underworld, which is where the system of uh, reincarnation occurs. It's basically bardo, uh, or I guess you could think of it like kind of like an underworld, uh, a limbo maybe, perhaps. Uh, basically, when a, when a person dies, their soul goes into the underworld, and then based on their karma, they're either going to end up being reborn as a human or an animal, or if they have really good karma, they might end up being reborn in uh, Sumeru, in one of the heavens. Uh, there's two main types of sentient beings in this world. The main ones being humans, the Lokans, who live on the land, and then Devi, who are like gods that live in Sumeru. Except that it's not gods in the sense that they are uh, immortal, more than they are just like uh, more powerful beings. Like they have like higher Idi, for example, and they are just, uh, they might take on different forms. They might look humanoid or they might be able to, you know, shapeshift and things like that. So they're just kind of like more powerful beings. Um, 
And then, of course, the other, the other rankings would be if you had bad karma or if you had led a life where you were driven by desires or base instincts, you might be reborn as a hungry ghost or the soul might be reborn as uh, someone condemned to hell. So there's like different rankings based on karma. So it's, it's kind of similar to how like uh, a lot of, uh, how a lot of uh, um, Buddhist, uh, uh, like, re like uh, how uh, samsara works kind of in terms of the rebirth cycle and like ending up in different rankings based on like your karma. Let me see here, what else we got here? Uh, so we mentioned Bardo, yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned, I mentioned briefly also Idi. Uh, Idi is like, you know, the energy that's obviously used in the game as, oh, for, I think, for super, for super moves as well as like blocking. It's just like the ability to do like uh, extraordinary powers. I mean, it gets even more fantastical, obviously, than just being able to block an attack. Um, but the idea being that you can acquire or manifest Idi based on how well you can, um, based on your training and meditation, the energy that permeates the world itself would be called prana. And being able to adapt that into yourself and manifest it in different forms is idi. So that's kind of like our equivalent to magic and mana. Uh, one of the, I guess let's let's go over the. So I went over the I went over heaven and hell and uh, the underworld, and then the most complicated part of the world would be where the humans live because it's basically the equivalent to our world. So there's a lot of uh, humans obviously struggle amongst themselves. There's a lot of political struggle uh, within that world. Uh, we can divide the world into four major regions, the north, east, south, and west. Um, you know, Ajna starts from the south, so a majority of the game setting is built around starting at this point and uh, from her perspective coming from the south. Uh, so I'll, I'll, start with, uh, I'll start with that. One of the things to note, too, is that because Kala landed in the land of the Loken, Loken realm, um, she affected that place the most. She was stopped before she got a chance to go through all of Sumeru and take over the world, but she had definitely made a path of destruction throughout the world uh, when she initially landed. So in the south is where Kala first landed. She landed, maybe I'll just start doing stuff. So she landed like somewhere around here or whatever. When she landed, she made it a gigantic crater, like an impact point. Uh, that crater became like a gigantic basin that is filled with a, a strange milk-like liquid, so, and it's been known as the basin of milk. Um, it, be it becomes like an important point in terms of how it, affects, how it affects the south. One of the things that occurs is um, that, that liquid, when it's uh, converted to, when it's a, uh, let me see here, how, how do I describe this? Uh, the milk could be processed into like a powerful elixir known as soma. It is said to give people incredible power and feelings of overwhelming joy. However, it is difficult to process, and when it gets messed up, it's, it becomes like an impure version, which uh, gives, gives some of those effects temporarily, but it's more of a side effect. What, what starts to occur is people start processing this milk into soma, but it's a failed version of it that causes basically like a sort of addiction. And a lot of the people in the land start becoming addicts to this fake soma. And um, that's kind of like a huge factor in terms of like a lot of the population is being affected by this, uh, it was basically a drug. And um, a lot of people attempting to gain some sort of enlightenment are failing to do so uh, because they're relying on this drug instead. And of course it has uh, even more fantastical side effects than, than just crippling addiction. It also has like it starts warping people's forms, so they start turning into monsters, basically. And uh, a lot of that starts coming in where people who are attempting to use this drug are slowly turning into, uh, have this ability to turn into horrible monsters. And that's the type of, that's one of the types of obstacles that Ajna will run into along the way on her journey. Um, in addition to that, the South has been taken over by a powerful warlord as been implied in the story, obviously. Um, that a warlord's name is Ravanavar. He is, uh, he is seemingly invincible. He's got like some sort of incredible power. Apparently, some sort of boon from Kala herself has given, her, get, has given him incredible power and the ability to basically take over all of the South. Um, and you know, anyone, and his, his forces are pro-Kala, 
and anyone who's not uh, aligned with Kala, uh, he wipes out. So, for example, that's one of the reasons why that's the reason why Arjuna's village was attacked. It was because they were not aligned with Kala, and as a result, they were wiped off. Um, of course, this is like what is the catalyst for Ajna's own journey, and we'll get to see more about the nature of Ravanavar as she goes through this uh, quest. Basically, um, Ravanavar is like a tyrannical dictator that has taken over the land, like with militaristic rule, and it's obviously horrible, and he's oppressing the people who are already a major, uh, a huge portion of, are already affected by Kala's invasion. Um, he's also like found out a way to master uh, things that have been a part of Kala's uh, essence. Like when she landed, she uh, left behind like a lot of different parasitic like creatures called the Vetala that um, he has also found out how to harness in terms of using as part of his army. So then he's using that as part of his power as well. Uh, part of this is because in addition to conquering the south, uh, the west and the east are also trying to come in because of the resources that are available in the south, uh, including the basin of milk now, which has become like a commodity that is desired by both sides as well as like the natural resources of that land. Um, but because of his boon and because of his uh, ability to control these Vitala as well as his own, his own army and uh, various other factors, uh, Ravanovar is able to keep those two sides at bay, but it's basically at this incredibly unstable uh, sense of balance. So it's more just like a great time of conflict. So even though Kala herself uh, is not uh, as active as she was when she was roaming around destroying the land, um, humans are fighting amongst themselves uh, you know, as an effect of her presence. One of the things to note also is that the West has, uh, you might have noticed a lot of steampunk elements in the character designs and in some of the settings. Um, one of the reasons is because the West has gained uh, an accelerated sense of knowledge. Uh, like they're, they've basically gotten like a premature industrial revolution that's causing them to, that's allowing them to build more advanced war machines than their neighbors and giving them the advantage to start making an empire themselves, uh, which I've called the Iron Kingdom for the time being. Um, and it's basically spreading across, uh, you know, invading towards the north as well as towards the south and all of the regions that were included in the west have been basically taken over by that kingdom um, and you know they're, they're invading starting to invade the south the reason they were able to get that advanced uh, in their industrial revolution is because there are a lot of artifacts left behind when Kala had attacked all of the land so you'll see like various things that seem to not exactly fit in the setting because they are from other world systems that Kala had consumed prior. So it's kind of like stuff that she like left behind while, while roaming. Um, so like a lot, of, a lot of that stuff kind of like opens the door for strange occurrences uh, happening throughout the, throughout the land in terms of like advanced technology or just like knowledge that should be forbidden otherwise, uh, starting to spread among people. I think that covers like the major parts of it. I mean, I have more notes here, but maybe now is a good time to start seeing how confused people are now. Um, so I'll probably start looking at stream questions. I see there was a lot of discussion already. Uh, let's see what we have here. You guys have any questions? Oh, thank you, thank you, John. I see you typing things in there, appearing over here. Or the, are you guys able to see the chart, by the way? I mean, I don't even know if this helps. I, I think, like, I probably explained the majority of it with words, but. Yeah, I think, like, I mean, like, part of it is also what happens in, like, the second half of the story. But basically, basically, yeah, uh, Ajna will have to go into Sumeru at some point, both both directions. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, John. John was asking on behalf of uh, if if Ajna was gonna go to heaven or hell or I guess Sumeru in collectively, right? Yeah. yeah. If if Ajna was gonna go to Sumeru. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the 
All right. So the north has like uh, the north has a couple of things going on. I mean, it's basically this this part of it is like the equivalent to like the Americas, and then like part of it would be like um, like the Arctic, but also this part. So there's like uh, the idea. You know how like I mentioned earlier that um, Kala has traveled to various world systems and consumed them. Uh, one of them was advanced enough in technology that uh, some of them managed to escape uh, through like uh, interdimensional travel and managed to land in Loka. So there's a couple of refugees from another world over in that region, and they are basically, uh, they basically, they're basically, they're sort of like the equivalent to the Anunnaki, um, or the Nephilim. So, but they, they basically landed in that area, and um, they, uh, they try to warn the humans about the presence of Kala. So some people listened, and some didn't. So those who tended to listen to, the, to, these, to this race, called the Goloth, uh, they, um, they managed to prosper a, uh, more, but also in general, basically, um, they, they, are, they are like another, another race of sentient beings that are living in, um, living in Loka. So there's that, that kind of factor in there, too. The East is basically the equivalent to uh, China, and it would be like the, the Jade Empire or the Jade Dynasty, I guess. Uh, Still trying to figure out the exact details of the names, but similar, a little different than the West in the sense that they have a more isolationist view where they want to make sure that they aren't being attacked because some Goloth extremists from the North actually who believe that humans can't uh, take care of themselves or this world are trying to take over and one of the places they've been trying to invade, invade is the East. So they've built a wall to block that off. But also at the same time, the East is trying to take over the Basin of Milk and the resources from the South because they want to have the trade advantage as well as to prevent the West from getting too powerful. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, also to repeat that question, uh, someone was asking me to repeat more about the Devi and the Lokans uh, in terms of this world setting. Basically, the Devi are uh, more powerful and benevolent, generally benevolent uh, beings that live in the upper regions of Sumeru, whereas the Lokans are basically the equivalent to humans, and they live on in the Loken realm, which is like the equivalent to our world. Did that answer it? Oh, shit. Uh, That's all right. I mean, I guess that was, a, that was effectively a more efficient way of saying what I was saying earlier anyway. Um, if you're asking about also, like, basically, the whole reincarnation system that works here is, is a based on like how good someone's karma is. Uh, for those who might not know, karma would be like, you know, your good deeds and bad deeds and basically like your, your um, just like how, how good your, your being is. Um, I don't know if that's enough of a description of what karma is. Hopefully people know what I'm talking about. But, uh, but yeah, you know, like your good deeds and bad deeds, like basically like you're judged at, uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you go through Bardo, which is in the underworld, I'm gonna write that down. You go through a process that's 49 days, and by the end of it, you are reincarnated to a different, you're reincarnated to a different being based on how good and bad you were in your past life. Um, so, you know, some, some beings may have to pay more of a karmic debt than others, depending on, like, what they did in the past. And uh, depending on, like, what, what, they're determ what is determined, they'll either end up reborn in hell or reborn in the under, uh, or reborn as a hungry ghost or reborn as a human or animal, or if they're like pretty good, they'll be reborn as a Devi. Just uh, to interject, you just uh, got over 3,000 donators. Oh, shit. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Wait. Uh, since, since the beginning. Not, uh, not like just now. Oh, OK. I wish just now. So we just got 3,000 3, donators? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so cool. much. Woo. Um, let's see here. Yes, they are, uh, most of them are, some are Devi. Uh, the, one of the things, too, are, would be that some of the Devi, while a majority of them live in Sumeru and are kind of separate from Loka, uh, there are some that are also living among the Lokans. Uh, I don't know about multiple endings, but I 
I guess that would be to be determined. We're still trying to figure out like like the final final ending. Though I, I have something in mind, except that um, I think like in terms of like scope, obviously multiple endings is definitely more stuff. But definitely having like some effect uh, of karma uh, in the game would be really cool. That's a pretty good description, I guess. They are they are alive though. Yes, this is this is different than the Ein are, um, in that it's not it's not capturing souls that have died. It is about uh, they are still alive and they they join her on her quest. So it's kind of it's almost like a weird justification for when you see in an RPG how the protagonist always has like the hero like the other character party members just kind of walk out of them and then walk back in. Like it's almost like as if that had some sort of reasoning, even though it never really needed one. Um, so it's kind of like that, I guess. <laughs> we, well, your goal is to try to punch Kala in the face, I guess. So that she's a god. <laughs> People love roti. It's a good food too. He should have a brother named Parata. I highly I doubt that, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, someone asked if, wait, what was it again? Will we, will the game be made if we don't meet the fundraiser goal? That is a no, unfortunately. Oh, I mean, this is like, I would think that it's clear enough in the in the campaign text, but this is like, and I think Mike mentioned it before, this is like kind of our, sort of basically our last chance in regards to working as a, as a group on, on a project. We're kind of like at the end of the rope. Um, I guess, is that enough to, sure. to okay, embellish on it? Fine. You want to Oh, yeah. I mean, like, and I'm sure you guys do. So that, like, I, I'll just focus on lore for this discussion. Um, what makes incarnation special to normal people? Should we mention that? Wonder. <laughs> that there is an answer to that. Um, why are the incarnations special from other people? Though maybe maybe it could also be an interesting thing where they're not. But the thing is that there is a reason why specifically those characters. It's because they have portraits. So when you talk to them, right? That's that's why, right? They have names. No, that's why. You can always tell them more important NPCs. Yeah, exactly. Kala has a Kala. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Ashna has a third eye, so she can like kind of sense. She can sense when you, when the when a character is important. No, but there is a reason. Um, Again, like uh, most of most of this chat or this stream would be about the world lore, and I, I'm like hesit still hesitant to describe uh, story more story specific stuff. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, is that uh, is that one of the questions, or are you just asking that? Oh, okay. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I'm just I was just reading one of these. I was curious. Uh, okay. Will there be missable, optional incarnations? Yeah, there would be. Um, there would be incarnations that you really have to look out for to find. So. There will be a minimal requirement for the core story, obviously, uh, but that number is much less than the the idea being that that number is much less than the number total. So a lot of the game's exploration exploration reward will be in discovering different incarnations. So there will definitely be optional and missable ones. Uh, oh, you mean like the okay? So the context of the prototype, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So, so in terms of the so in terms of the context of the of the prototype, if people are curious about it, it's uh 
It's basically in a, a temple that's been taken over by Vitala. As you, for those who didn't catch it earlier, I mentioned earlier, um, basically the parasitic uh, uh, remnants of Kala's invasion are these creatures called Vitala. And a lot of them are basically roaming the lands even though Kala herself has been sealed off. So basically, they kind of are like the rogue monsters that are going around causing trouble in the land. Uh, one of them being the boss that you see in the prototype has taken over this temple along with a lot of its cohorts and it has killed a couple of the guardian lions that were guarding that temple and turned it into its own like uh, impromptu body to wear uh, because otherwise it's the, it looks like a bunch of like purple worm type creature. Uh, that's why you see when its face mask is opened up it looks like it's made out of like weird organic pieces. So basically it's taken over the temple and uh, Ajna is there to, to banish them. Uh, in terms of the context of the whole story, it's not exactly connected in that way more than she's just trying to vanquish evil here. Uh, the, the monsters there also, I guess, accompany, accompanying him. Uh, that's, the, that's the basic context of, of, the, of the prototype's temple. In terms of the look of it, it's uh, inspired by Angkor Wat, as well as uh, Mount Popa in Burma, and a few other places that kind of have that similar vibe where it's like uh, temples that haven't been used in a while and have a little bit of that overgrowth element to them because it's always been like an interesting like kind of combination you know uh, temple structures as well as like tree roots growing through them and stuff <laughs> oh you mean like as in like he well you know he could certainly go out that that back entrance too right <laughs> I mean it's not like and who knows maybe he could run through things too but I mean, yeah, he's just kind of taking it over. They, it's just kind of like, it's just kind of like uh, you know found, found a shelter and it's like uh, kind of hi hijacked that area. Though nearby that temple would probably be like actually used temples and the village, so there's like a definite threat of him reaching the village. Uh, I guess Jam one two two zero is asking how advanced is the world? Uh, would you say? You said steampunk, but how steampunk? Uh, the cars, trains, planes, the internets. Does Kala have Instagram? <laughs> she probably has an Instagram. Um, but uh, in terms of steampunk, yeah, it's mostly it's mostly the West, but actually other places have picked up on it too. But it's not the kind of thing where cars are everywhere. Um, it's more that you might see uh, elements of that in some places, but it's not really widespread. It's mostly like the West has way accelerated and their land is like polluted and damaged beyond repair. It's like that kind of thing where the West is definitely all dreary and gray and dying. Um, and they're basically trying to consume resources from their neighbors in order to stay alive. They use the justification saying that they're spreading to unify the world against Kala, but they are, you know, obviously the, the real reason is they're just trying to spread their influence. Um, they have airships, but there are probably aren't that many in the uh, across the world in that sense. So it's it's still a bit uneven in terms of the spread of technology. Uh, the East probably also uses more gunpowder than than like you know other regions too though. So they have uh, elements of it as well. Yeah, yeah, they would probably have a lot of gunfire, fireworks, uh, cannons. Uh, yeah, if you're if you're referring to like Hindu mythology, like um, there's definitely, and or just the whole concept of like Sumeru and stuff is like a lot of uh, Dharmic religions have that like Jainism and as well as Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, I guess those would be like what I used as the base, but in terms of like the specific details of stories per each region, those are more um, from other regions. So it's kind of like the idea being is that the core structure has this influence of uh, Buddhist and Hindu mythology, but the individual stories and a lot of the, the elements that are inside each region are more region specific. <laughs> it's part of her personality. She was never much of a, she's kind of a hermit always. Um, should I, I don't know how much of her the backstory that we're talking about we should explain of her. I guess I guess that gets in the plot stuff. 
to be determined. Well, I mean, also just, yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. She's always been like a hermit. Uh, she's never really, she was always like uh, fascinated in dark magic and like shamanism and that kind of like weirded out the village that she was in. The only friend that she had was Bomb. And um, Bomb is her tiger's name. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really? I, I always feel like whenever I hear it, it sounds like there's a dead rat like stuck in my throat. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, no, dude. That, that's, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not holding it closer. It's okay. It's not getting all blown out or whatever. Thank you, though. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I do actually mean Hobbs. Huh? Was it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That would be amazing. Oh, Earl was Earl was saying someone should make a Calvin and Hobbes fan art of Rasmi. I agree. Oh, you're uh, you're thinking of uh, Ajna, and that is that is correct. Though. Roti is Ajna's friend. Um, How old is Roti? She's been training with him. Uh, I don't know. I mean that that those shots in the trailer were not from that long ago. I would think. But obviously, you can see in the trailer that Ajna is more able to grasp her mind around like the physical aspects of her training, and doesn't seem to pay nearly as much attention to the spiritual parts. So. Also good to know that T-Birds live for 25 to 30 years. Hello. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Is that a baby tapir? That makes me like huge. <laughs> well, the baby baby tapirs actually have like a different like fur pattern on them too. Oh, so that's a full color. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Man child. Yeah, exactly. It's like Buta from Gurren Basically immortal. <laughs> Eternally mascotable. Yeah. Rasmi's particular magic had like dark implications to it. She became like weirdly fascinated with like the type of magics that like the Vitala and uh, Kala were using. So like there was there's some dark elements to that. Uh, in terms of magic, like Yidi and like being able to do like martial arts powers and you know all that stuff, um, it's it's like generally practiced and attempted. Like few people are able to actually do it, um, you know. And, and uh, but then those who can, it's like you know it, it is respected. Um, there are different different types of magics that are used. There are also, for example, Ravanavar has with him uh, cohorts called the Raksasha. Or basically these uh, shape-shifting demons, uh, and they have they use Maya, which is like a particular type of Idi magic that allows them to do shape-shifting, which kind of allows them to hide among Ravanovar soldiers. So even when the West are using like machine guns on them, and like they might be mowing them down, suddenly one of them turns into uh, Raksasha that was in, dis in disguise and just like slaughters them. So there's like this weird like dynamic in terms of how warfare is playing out between the different sides and the elements that they're using. Uh, I, so there are different governments, um, and I would I would mostly say that it's the government running it. In terms of like the West, obviously, like especially with how history was back then, you know, religion and religion and uh, military are kind of hand in hand. Like because you know they might be using religion as a justification for conquest, as in the case for the Crusades, for example. Um, so it's it's kind of merged. Yeah, there are cities. There are there are trade cities. There are there are some bigger cities. There are also villages. Uh, so when Ajna travels, she'll run into a couple of different varieties of places. That that includes both the south and other countries. So not not just like the cities in the west, but there are also. Oh, I got I got some. Sorry. Yeah. The um, Earl was asking if I needed water. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah. So there's the there are cities in all all regions. You might have noticed also in the concept art, for example, even in the north or in the Americas equivalent, there are like really advanced cities there too. So you'll see you'll see a lot of things. Um, one of the examples too is like uh, Tai Krung City, which is like a in in the south, and it's the place where a lot of the the addicts to soma have ended up like gathering. So there's like a lot there's a particularly seedy city in the south that has like uh, a lot of the people who are like kind of like drug addicts ending up.
it's unique. Would you say? Uh, yeah, it's it's unique to it's unique to Ajna. There's uh, there are a couple of other e examples that look similar or seem to be similar, but are not quite the same thing. So she'll run into she'll run into what might effectively be considered like a false hero at some point. Um, so you'll you'll see things that seem like what she's doing, um, and it's going to be part of like her trying to figure out what what exactly allows her this ability. Yes, Dar is the first incarnation you get. Uh, it, he he's an accidental one when Ajna tries to fight him after he's attacked the village. <laughs> so, so absorbing incarnations is not always on purpose. Absorbing incarnations is not. Apparently, it's not always on purpose. Uh, Ajna doesn't exactly know what she's doing. Sometimes she eventually gets the hang of it, uh, but there, but like I was saying, like she doesn't seem to fully understand her powers quite yet. <laughs> they could try to steal one. I don't think they would necessarily literally use the same currency. We might not even have like currency as a thing in the game, but in the world, yes, they would use different currencies uh, or like barter system, I guess, or trading. Yeah. yeah. What is it? The tower design, tower design reminds me of Tower Stone Giant Robot Awesome Retro Design. I want to see a Golem robot character in those incarnations. Anyway, what are your influences in the Golem for that incarnation? Okay, I'll repeat that, I guess. Uh, the character designs reminds Rio -o -o -ta -ha -ha of Power Stone Giant Robo and like just that kind of retro design approach. Uh, and he's wondering if there's like a giant, a Golem robot character in those incarnations. Uh, what are your influences and in terms of the goals for the art direction? Um, so in terms of the, in terms of having a robot type character, I'm, I'm sure John would be down for that. I'd be down for that too. I mean, uh, the closest thing we have right now, you probably saw him, is Naga Rider, who's that guy who's basically like a common Rider type character. Um, so we will have people with either magical armor that just happens to make them look like a robot, or we could have like things like, uh, you know, a, a steampunk machine that happens to have a soul in it, like that that classic trope. Uh, from you know, the west side from the from the Iron Kingdom, um, so there's there's uh, opportunities for that. Um, in terms of the the character designs, I've always, I've always liked just really, I wanted to try for this to just aim on having the characters be just really big on particular shapes because like with Skullgirls, a lot of them are roughly the same same shape. Like I mean. For this one, I want to have more of a variety in terms of uh, you know really big characters, really small ones, characters that are really defined by their shape. And I guess that that tends to be a more retro character design uh, element, like when you see stuff like Tessujin Twenty Eight compared to like Gundams and stuff. Uh, both are awesome, disclaimer. Uh, but like uh, you know that one's like a that one's a very distinct shape, you know, obviously. Um, so you know, I guess it just lends itself to being retro in its feel. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, in terms of the influences of the character design, or the enemy designs in the prototype, uh, the op is pretty much imported directly from its description. So that one is, so the op is actually goes by several names. The, the other name is the Penangal, as well as the uh, Layak and the Kraus. So there's like uh, several names that it goes by. Um, the op was the easiest one to remember. So that's kind of why we went with that one. Also, it's like the shortest, so it sounds like the lowest level version of it, because obviously when you get the Penangalan, that sounds more advanced. Um, either way, though, uh, the fact that its hair hung over its head, though, was actually Mariel's suggestion. I don't know if you remember when we were doing the discussions, because my first sketches of the Penangalan were just straight up just what it looks like normally, which is like a pretty normal head. But the fact that hair covers all of its organs and its face and kind of allows for that cool like reveal, that was suggested by Mariel. So that, that was really a really awesome one. And that also got me thinking about the whole, like, 
making them move like jellyfish thing or you know like just things like the whole opening up like a like a frilled lizard or like a cobra like that was all influenced by that suggestion of having the hair be long and uh, i think that was really cool um the belu are influenced by they're kind of a mix of a few things oh yeah yeah he's the guy on the screen there you can see he's got the big tongue and there it is okay i have yet to figure out exactly how to point on that that that's ajna that's ajna that's that, that's our game <laughs> but uh yeah so the the belu is uh a kind of a mix of things the name belu is actually ogre in burmese and they're often described as having like blue skin and fangs pointing upwards so that's why he's got very distinct fangs because that's like one of the key features that was described in terms of his face and uh the the face mask and the long hair behind it's based off of uh this one particular balinese mask design uh for these lions called uh Barong, if I remember right, but basically it's kind of a it's kind of a mix of like the those uh, masks that had the kind of googled eyes, like they have the really uh, they have some really cool shapes. So it was kind of playing off of that, combined with uh, the Burmese belu, and that's also why the main color of those guys is a kind of bluish green. In terms of the hungry ghost, though, that one's the most different from its source material. They're they were inspired by preta, which are these like. I also mentioned it's like the, basically the things that you can be reborn as if your if your karma is bad or if you're driven by desire or like carnal instincts uh, or just like base instincts or just like a really greedy person as a human you might get reborn as a hungry ghost and that's also why the hungry ghosts in the game tend to have like uh, kind of like a low life kind of personality to them or just kind of like are just like all about eating they're just all about consuming the original preta they're actually described more as having incredibly small mouths and really thin necks because they're supposed to always be hungry and can never satisfy their hunger. So that element of never being able to satisfy your hunger is kind of like influ uh, uh, influences the hungry ghosts here. I also, because they're supposed to be like the mascot characters, mascot monsters, like the equivalent to slimes for our game, they will have many flavors and many forms, including like after cannibalizing each other because they're so hungry, they might eat each other. They might start to change forms and you might see some that start to take on the more traditional Preta form, where they have the small mouths and the distended bellies and the thin necks, or more, or other monstrous forms that are just covered in mouths and stuff. So it's since they're a simple design, it's kind of fun to play off that idea. Oh, yeah, I can talk about. Oh, and also the boss. Yes. Well, I mentioned it briefly. I'll mention it again just in case no one, uh, if, if uh, people didn't catch onto it earlier. But the boss itself is also based on a Burmese. Uh, a Burmese creature called the Manot Tiha, which basically means man lion. Uh, they're pretty distinct from other man lion creatures, like you know, with sphinx or griffins and stuff. They're they're different because they have two hind quarters, for some reason. I'm I'm not exactly sure what the etymology of that is. I think it's because probably the guardian statues, when they put them in the corner, they just kind of like have both ends in into one, at, at the corner of a temple. But they're basically supposed to be guardian uh, temple guardians. Uh, the one in the game is a bastardized. Uh, monster version of one, obviously, um, because it's taken over two other. On my shirt here, you can see Chinte, which are guardian lions. Um, he took over two of these guys and combined it into a Manot Tiha looking creature. So that's the context for it in the prototype, and then in terms of where it came from. Um, yeah, it's it's based on a it's based on an actual mythological creature. So, so that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like the 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 creatures that it hijacked the body of. It's also using their spirit as a tax. That's why when it does like a roar, you'll see like a fiery version of a chinte attacking the person. And then what happens is when he loses, is he loses control of their spirits, so they kind of have revenge on him and just kind of team up on him and uh, uh, basically burn him alive. And then they all just kind of go out in a blaze of glory. You mean, are you talking about all of these? Because definitely, yes. That, that is a big part of the world setting, is that all of the regions are having war with each other. Even though Kala herself had temporarily united them in the sense that they had a common enemy, as soon as she was sealed away, uh, the political fallout occurs, and everyone is fighting either to justify unifying against her or you know using her power for their own benefit or trying to get resources that were left behind because of her presence. So there's definitely a war going on throughout the world, even though the main bad guy that had appeared is seemingly sealed away. And of course, even that is in question now, too. Is 
Wait, what was it? Was, was oh, are the incarnations based off of certain ethnicities? Um, the answer is yeah, roughly. I mean, not not completely specifically. Some are obviously more specific than others, but generally, it's as a base, but not completely strict. It does help in terms of like you know, obviously they're from within these regions, then um, you know that that helps influence like what kind of characters they are. Oh, can I answer this one about uh, Z Wolf? Wolf, Wolfly, Wolfly, please ask us about the ask about Ajna's skirt. Um, you'll notice that she pulls her skirt up in order to run around in in the in the stage that she's going to be doing action in. The reason why she pulls it up means that her skirt is normally otherwise down, and that is when when she's in a temple, her skirt will always be down past her calves because that's just the proper thing to do, and she won't be wearing slippers whenever she's in a temple. So it's like I always wanted that detail to be like correct because like it always kind of bothered me when I see people wearing their shoes indoors uh, or something like that. You know, that, that attention to detail is something that I, I feel would have been important. It'd be the equivalent to, you know how uh, in Odin Sphere when Gwendolyn is in her um, casual wear, or I guess her, it's not very casual, it's more like a formal gown, uh, and she's not in battle mode, but she's walking around the castle to talk to people. It's kind of the equivalent to that. She would have her skirt down and her shoes off if she was in a temple or something. I've always felt like one of the things that would be cool about this game or just getting that capturing that feeling of uh you know the sound of people's feet walking on tile and like the general serene nature of like a buddhist temple um you know hearing the bells in the distance or people like praying and you know seeing incense and uh, just, just being able to capture that kind of feel uh somewhere in the game would be really good and that's one of the reasons why i think it's important for her to have that element to her okay cool cool I'm glad that contest gets spelled out. I don't know if like people had different ideas based on whatever else. I'm not exactly sure, but that's the reason. Yeah, yeah, she's a it's a very she's a very practical design, as you could say. She's a very down to earth. Should I repeat that question? Yeah, Let's see. Uh, yeah, what are the rules for incarnation eligibility? Eligibility it seems like animals can be incarnations due to the falconer, basically. Uh, and uh, can children become incarnations? Is becoming an incarnation permanent? People of all ages can become incarnations. And yes, there are some cases of animals becoming incarnations, um, even though a majority of them are locans. Because like uh, Ajna herself, her main form is a loken. You'll notice that things within like this, re like from any of these ranking regions can be, including Devi, animals, perhaps even these guys. Um, so yeah, there's a it's a it's a pretty wide spectrum in that regard. In terms of the requirement of it, um, as we were mentioning earlier, there's a there is a reason, but it's also story esque. So I don't know if uh, maybe we can save that for another time or like later on uh, if we talk about more of the story stuff specifically. Oh, okay. So in the art, we notice that Ajna's father is missing his fingertips on his left hand. Do we get info on how he got so hurt? Uh, or is that just accumulated injuries from a career of fighting? Um, those all, a lot of those injuries occurred at one particular moment that is uh, important in the story. Um, he ends up being basically, he was incredibly powerful before, but and even though he is wise and able to teach a lot of what he learned, he himself is basically kind of like sealed off at this point and kind of kind of crippled at this particular event that had occurred. You'll notice that he, he only has one eye, where it's kind of a play on the fact that Ajna effectively has three eyes. Um, so it's kind of like a weird trade-off, passing it on. Uh, the, the, the fingers thing is also kind of a, kind of a Buddhist reference to uh, one of the 32 signs of a great person is uh, one of the descriptions of Buddha's uh, features is that he had even fingers um, for like stronger, like. I guess like stronger hands or something. And then so like what happened was when he raised his hand at this particular event, his hands got chopped at, at the pinky level, I guess, to even them up. And then, but now he's kind of like, he's kind of like, his entire body is covered in scars, but particularly places like, like his palms and his, uh, the soles of his feet. And then like where, where his, if he had a third eye, where it would be, and then one of his other eyes too, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, he just, uh, it just like got, even that, you could say.
<laughs> yes. That's that's the that's the tragic dramatic event that occurred. Um, let me see here. I mean, I think someone was asking about the Heruka. So uh, I guess I could talk about that a little bit. The Heruka referring to Ajna's wrathful form. You'll notice that in the trailer as well as in the figure. Awesome figure, by the way. Um, Ajna has a like a blue form where she her third eye is, becomes visible and she generally looks a lot more powerful and like her hair has become becomes wild. It's based off of like uh, Tibetan wrathful deities. Uh, Heruka is like a term for a type of one. It literally means blood drinker. Um, but basically she gains like this, it's kind of like her powered up form that she's able to unlock when she understands a little bit more about how to control her powers. Uh, one of them being this ability to do some form of shape shifting. Um, she, she gains like incredible powers and it's kind of like a wrathful kind of thing. She'll be able to like, you know, use it to even more greater extent like shooting beams or like, you know, uh, catching on fire or you know just running at super speed and things like that um, so I guess that would be my note on that for now yeah I think that would be great I think that would be a really important thing to have um, definitely we should have uh, maybe like a mix of um, probably a majority of it would be the description of it in the context of the game Oh, I'm sorry. The question was uh, if we were going to have a bestiary in the game if it were made. Um, and the answer would be, yeah, definitely. I, I think that would be like, in fact, you might notice that like uh, it was described in the campaign that we have incarnations that are revolved around these more functional roles, like things like listing a bestiary or like if you bring them like, or if, if you bring them something from one of the creatures and then they can write something about them or something like that. So you, you'll, it'll actually be incorporated in terms of uh, 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 recruiting incarnations, like one of them will be a master of the bestiary, so that's kind of like how it rolls in. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely have one, and it'll be a mix of like either like stuff from the game's context or the real life equivalent of it. Because I love the idea that this game could encourage people to look up these things. Because that was one of my favorite things from like Castlevania, for example. Like I didn't know what a boor was until I played Symphony of the Night, and then I looked it up afterwards, and I noticed that sometimes people would learn things from this game by even just from the prototype, like looking up stuff afterwards. So that's that's pretty encouraging. And Myanmar is the name of Burma. Um, and you know, like people even know now what roti is, because I guess they didn't before. Roti is like a, a really awesome uh, flatbread. It's, um, he kind of follows the tradition of naming characters after, an anime characters after food, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's plausible. I'm sure people have named their pets Muffin in some form, so it's not too outlandish. What else? Oh, I'm sorry if I, if I didn't answer earlier. My name is Alex Ahad. Oh, so one of the questions, which is a very basic one that I should have answered right off the bat is, who's the guy on the mic? Uh, my name is Alex Ahad. I'm the creative lead. So, like, uh, I'm the guy who, like, thought of ideas that don't make sense and then <laughs> try to make sense of them. Um, and, like, you know, like, just, like, the conceptual ideas that are in the game as well as, like, um, you know, as, as, a, as someone who's half Burmese, half Filipino, I felt like I wanted to try to have, like, a world setting that kind of played off of, like, stuff from that region. Um, and it was just kind of cool to, to be able to have that opportunity to try that because you don't normally see that in a lot of games. And I feel like there's like a lot of really unique stuff in there that uh, with the proper amount of research and time figuring out could be really cool to apply to things. I've seen some cases where you kind of see it and that always instantly caught my attention. So I felt like there should be more of that because like, there's a ton of like Tolkien stuff and there's a ton of D&D stuff and that's, that's all really cool and like all the medieval stuff. But like, it would be cool to also have stuff from, from the South or the Southeast Asian regions because there's like a lot of really amazing visuals from those stories. And I felt like it would be cool to really play up those. Uh, 
Uh, so Mega Johnny, which is a great name, uh, asks, are the Batala pest-like in behavior? Do they spread aggressively? I'm also going to write down how, how it's spelled if you guys want to look it up. Vitala are basically evil spirits uh, in Hindi mythology. A lot of them are described as vampiric. Um, in the context of this game, they are... In the context, they also tend to control corpses. So they're kind of like, they're like sort of like the, un they're kind of like a general wrap up term for like the undead. Uh, so spooky stuff like that. But I'm sorry, you can't see it. Vitala. Um, basically, in this game, they are they are parasitic in nature. They have uh, sort of an undefined form outside of. They're kind of. It also is a blanket term for for uh, what comes off of uh, Kala. Basically, they're like weird parasitic remnants of things she's chewed up, chewed up before in other worlds. So you might see like weird alien creatures as part of their organism design. But they also basically latch onto things that uh, either are dead if they're weaker vitala, or if they're strong enough, they can hijack living things and kind of possess them. So like the one in the boss, the, the Manot Tiha one in the prototype is probably not one of the stronger ones, but like just one of the, it, it happens to be big, but it like, it took over uh, dead bodies um, and then it eventually turned on them. Um, but you know, there's some that are even sentient so they can talk and they still have like a sense of self and they might be even like basically necromancers or things like that, or things that have hijacked, uh, maybe even like a Devi if they're strong enough. So you, you, it's also kind of a nice way to get a good context for evil versions of things that normally aren't evil. So they've like kind of taken over. Um, so that's what the Vitala uh, tend to be in this. I have a condenser microphone. Oh. Hello. Hello. Which means we don't have the whole one. Which means you can put it on the desk and it'll pick up everything. Oh, which also means you have to be quiet in the other room. Sure. Yo, Mike is here. He's got a mic. Hi. <laughs> yeah. This means I don't have to hold this thing up in my hand. <laughs> uh, it means you, if you want to switch, it means you have to take the stream down, so you might want to finish with that one. It's up to you. Uh, okay. Uh, it has been an hour, roughly an hour and 15 minutes. If you want to take like a five minute break. Sure, let me answer a few more questions, then I'll, then I'll do that, because I see a few more here. And also, just to give people. Uh, we also should plug this in and make sure that Max can recognize it. Oh, okay. Um, I guess in the meantime, so maybe I'll just give a. How much? How much time? Maybe I'll give a five minute, five minute, like five more minutes of stuff, and I'll, I'll answer what I can. Uh, and then we'll we'll see how the stream becomes after that. Might, I mean, we might continue after it anyway. Um, let me see here. Will we be able to direct directly interact with Roti in some way, i.e., picking him up, taking care of him, having him fetch stuff? Uh, I think in the final version that would be really good. Yeah. I think it'd be really fun to. The more you can do with Roti, the better. He'd be like not necessarily one of your incarnations, but just something outside of it. Or you know, I mean, I don't know exactly the exact specifics on that. But definitely being able to interact with the roti is something that I think would be very important. Yeah, yeah, even that, that sounds great. I think it's already like hilarious just watching him get chased and stuff. Like, I thought that was super cute already from the first time I saw it. Will there be any non-human incarnations? Uh, asks Joe2187. The answer to that is yes, there will be non-human incarnations. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess like it, that's a similar question to what I answered earlier, but I'll answer it again because I'm sure that it was missed. But uh, and also in the context of Vasco, because he has, you might notice he has a custom gun. He's he's apparently good at constructing his own guns, and he customized this one, and he's kind of works as like a mercenary now. Basically, he used to be part of the Iron Kingdom. The Iron Kingdom being the place that has the more technological steampunk advance advances. So they're they are more advanced than their neighbors, but that's not to say that everyone else is completely unarmed. Um, so there's, you know, there's, there's the spread of technology and there's definitely that element, like I was mentioning, where Kala had left behind artifacts of stuff from other worlds. She's not doing this on purpose, it just happens when she's traveling through. It's kind of like backwash when you're eating. <laughs> but like, um, basically, basically those artifacts are things that people have been collecting. Sometimes they get useful information out of it and reverse engineer or get ideas from seeing things. Uh, or forbidden knowledge even and stuff like that. So that's kind of like affected the path of technology. But, you know, it's been a little uneven. Some places are more advanced than others. And that's causing like a, an imbalance, you could say. Are dinosaurs still existing or are they extinct? Uh, actually, oh, I'm sorry. Are dinosaurs, uh, 
are dinosaurs still existing or are they extinct? I'm going to say yes, they still exist. Because, <laughs> no, no, totally not. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, actually, I didn't mention the physical description of the, the Goloths themselves, but I always wanted them to be feathered lizard-like. So basically, dinosaur people. Because <laughs> I think that would be great. Is there any other, any other questions? We might switch the mics. Oh wait, here's what does it say? Chili Bean asks a noob art production question. Now that you have a dye layer to color the lines, what is the point of having the all black line layer uh, of the sprites? Do so you mean like a? Well, it's easier to draw with a all black line layer. I mean, just just thinking in lines like, like that is just easier. If that's what you're asking. Uh, let's see here. Someone who has become an incarnation go back to normal later. This question has not been answered, by the way. Smear, smeargle. Um, yeah, they can, they they can go back home after. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Uh, can someone who has become an incarnation go back to normal later? Sorry, this has already been answered. It hasn't been answered yet, so I'm doing that now. Um, basically, yeah, they can they can go, they can return back. It's not permanent. Yeah, um, but that at least at least currently how I'm how I've been thinking about it is that it's not permanent. Ajna's personality does Ajna's personality tra tra change when she transforms? She definitely is more wrathful when she's in that form. So I would say, generally, yes, it's kind of like hulking out, I guess. Um, yeah, that's the thing, though. So she's basically like, it's basically like, at least how I'm thinking about it currently, this could be subject to change. It's basically like a Super Saiyan or just like, of course, there's the other form where it's like she can do a better version of it if she's more in control. Um, and there's, there's that aspect too. Well, there was a question earlier. I don't know if we got answered. Somebody asked if for this whole game, we would be doing uh, separate character form animations or would it always be a palette change? Oh, okay. So the... So I guess Earl is asking on behalf of someone who asked earlier if like Ajna's, uh, Ajna's wrathful forms, her Heroka form, would just be a palette change or if it would be like a full animation. It would definitely be a new character, a full animation when she transforms into it. Um, the palette swap thing is really cool though because I think what it would be is like she at first can only change her skin to blue, then eventually she can start doing the better version. So it's kind of like her leveling up. So it would be both, but uh, effectively, ultimately, the, the goal is to have um, a wrathful form. We just ran out of time for the prototype. I actually have some sketches of move stuff. I can post it on Tumblr later. I, I was thinking of doing that. I think that's okay. Yeah. So I'll probably post some of the Herica sketches that I had uh, online uh, in the near future. Probably later this week, actually. Yeah, I did. I did actually post some sketches of Dar on um, on my Tumblr earlier too. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, people are free to do that. Yeah. I absolutely want to. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so Earl is going to take care of that. Also, um, I'm, I'm going to do another one of that for Torani in the near future too, because I have a lot of sketches of hers as well. Um, and as as we get characters that are updated, if I have sketches of them, I'll post them online. What is this? Is there any other questions here? Speaking of Witzel from Darkstalkers, the Mesoamerican. Incarnation appears to be slightly mine based on his headpiece thing and jaguar looking skin. Is he based on the Maya or some other older cultures like the Olmecs? He's mostly based off of the sport that they played. So I was kind of looking up like um, the outfits. He, his design might like uh, adjust slightly. I was still trying to figure out it when I was making that drawing of him uh, for the for the trailer. But but yeah, it's basically based off of that that sport. So like the outfits that. It, I saw them wearing when I was looking up stuff. Uh, it's kind of based on uh, the one where they they use their hips to move the ball. Yeah, and there's like a there's like a ring that's kind of yeah, it's like a vertical ring instead of a horizontal one. Yeah. That's like slightly elevated, and you have to get the ball through that. And yeah, there's a religious version of it where uh, sacrifice might be one of the elements for the losers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, I kid, so today is my birthday, and I'm using some of my birthday money to donate. So oh man. Kind of 
dude, happy birthday and thank you, Dan. Much appreciated. Should I repeat that? I guess uh I kid says today is his birthday and he's using some of the money to to donate to our campaign. Um, okay, I'll, I'll repeat that. That's a good question. That, that's a good question. Uh, since Razmi carries... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's a different question. Wait, where's, where's the... Oh, okay, well... Basically, the question was, like, uh, uh, Razmi doesn't, doesn't seem to be particularly a team player, but she's still on the team anyway. Um, and, like, uh, does that imply that Ajna can take uh, incarnations by force, or does, or does Razmi have her own motivations? Um, the answer is actually yes to both of those. Uh, she, if Ajna really wants someone to join her, she could get them to join her. But in Razmi's case, she does actually have a motivation to join the party. Uh, it's part of her backstory and her involvement with the dark magics and the reason why Bomb is where he is right now, as well as the fact that they're fighting a Vitala in the prototype. So those all kind of roll up into like kind of the, one of the reasons why uh, Razmi's there. Um, I think the other question that I was accidentally reading instead, what was that? Um, do you, <laughs> it seemed like it was, that was a good one. Since Rasmi's since Rasmi carries a tiger soul in her lantern, but only counts as one incarnation, does that mean multi multi person incarnations are possible? Say like twins. Uh, I guess that does answer that does make it uh, an interesting question what that ultimate final head count is, because like you know like another example would be the falconer because like there's the falcon and her, so it's like or or things like that. Like does that imply that those are two incarnations? So I guess there are cases of that. Um, I'm not sure if uh, twins maybe, but that would be kind of cool too. I just like yeah, twin twin characters are always uh, interesting. Um, so e whether or not they count as two or one, there probably would be twin characters in in the game somewhere. So Kala is at a different rank. Okay, I mean, let me repeat that question. Uh, uh, what is it? Mexploit. Me yeah. Mexploit. Mexploit is asking if there are other gods in this world and. Uh, was the other half of that question? Are other gods going to be involved in the story? Uh, how are they portrayed? Okay, so so Kala herself is at a different ranking than the other gods that are in this world. The other gods are uh, the Devi, which are basically just like higher ranking beings. They're technically not that much different than humans in the sense that they aren't like um, they aren't like uh, complete rulers of like a certain element or things like that. Um, but they are like you know they have higher magic energy. They can change their forms. They might come in forms other than human. Um, they live way longer and things like that. So, and they're also just generally uh, living a, a happier life in Sumeru compared to the humans in Loka. Um, so, I guess that's how that's how he, that's how the, the the Devi, the gods, are portrayed in this world. But in terms of like an unbeatable or actual like divine being that's like above like uh, other sentient beings, uh, Kala is definitely feeling like at a different rank. Than those because when Kala was attacking the world, the Devi themselves could not really stop her either. And in fact, that is something that's on their mind lately too. Is even though the humans are struggling in their own world, uh, they themselves have to worry about the fact that Kala is kind of like inside the base of their their home world, and they have to figure out how to stop her too. But they haven't been able to quite figure that either. So even though there are gods, they are not like um, at the same rank ranking as like you know we might normally depict gods as. Uh, so the question is, if Ajna dies, do all the incarnations that are with her die too, or do they just kind of get ejected back into reality? Um, the answer, I believe, to that would be that they all die. I think that makes the most sense. Um, so there, the stakes are definitely high on that kind of thing. I mean, you can kind of see it in the prototype. When, you, when Ajna dies, you just, you just, it's game over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean like even uh, like a like a um, after you die, you get res revived? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, of course, there'll be something like that. But then you could say that she was on the brink of death. And, you, know, yeah. you can always like play that off in some way. Uh, 
Oh, she she would look like she's asleep. No, she's she'd be meditating. What do you think? She'd be like, like a giant hole or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's basically okay. You know, I'll answer. I'll, I'll repeat the question just so people know what we're, what me and John are talking about. But uh, what would it what would it look like if you were standing next to Ajna uh, when she decided to visit her inner realm? Uh, she would basically be meditating. She'd be like, you know, doing like this or something or that kind of thing. Um, you know, or like we were joking, like kind of snakes equivalent to when he's on the codec. Um, so she's basically kind of in her own mind at that point. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what the context of that. Uh, how good of a singer is Zebe? Um, maybe once he warms up, he's better. Or if he's like, if he's distracted doing archery, I don't know. I guess that would be my my gut instinct answer to that. That's true, though. I guess that's what that's a uh, it's uh, Matthew Mercer. He's a uh, really cool. He also did who did he do? He did he did uh, Zane, if I remember right, for uh, story mode for Skullgirl story mode. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a real suave voice. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the the beads give her infinite ammo or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a Do we have any more? Let's do a final round of Questions then, and then I'll we'll switch the mic to a different different one. All right, I'll give it a few more seconds. Any more? Any more final questions? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Any in-office jokes or memes about the characters yet? Anyone that was particularly fun to design talk about? Uh, Razmi is always fun to talk about because, like, that kind of personality is just always fun to think about. I would, I would say. Um, oh yeah, uh, Chris Co drew a really awesome Umaru style Razmi. Also, did did you ever post that one up? Okay, because I saw the other one too. That was like the colored one. Yeah. But like there's there's a couple of doodles of her in that style which seems to match pretty well. Did you see the one from Alpha today? Oh, is there another one? Oh shit. Smack at the contribute button. Oh <laughs> that's good. Oh, Dr. Susan says I want to see the concepts that led to Ajna's final design. Oh yeah, that'd be a, Yeah, we we went through a lot of iterations for Ajna's design, so you can if you if you guys are curious about seeing that we should Definitely post that up. I think it's on the. We have a like an entire like a uh, cloud, you know, drive, Google Drive folder full of full of that stuff. So we can probably just assemble that together and. That'd yeah, that'd be a cool update. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. Something like uh, the inherited, what she's inherited compared to what she like nature versus nurture, of course, is a classic theme in a lot of these things. Um. Oh, you mean like a permanent death kind of thing? Well, see, here's the thing. I guess like maybe what would happen is they'd have to wait 49 days later and find where that incarnation got reborn. Um, so there, I guess there's that element. Like if you actually had to wait like time or something, or like in the plot. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a thing too. If you're if you're um, if you're enlightened enough, or I guess like if you're just aware enough, basically, um, you can choose where you're reborn. I mean, in terms of like. That's what the Tibetan Book of the Dead is to help you learn, is to how to how to choose your rebirth, and that's also kind of like how the the Dalai Lama and like all those other guys are able to continue. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it could be something like uh, one of them dies early on and then like near the end of the game, maybe it's been like 49 days in, in terms of the game story, you have to find where they were reborn and then like, acquire them, get a baby on your party or something. Yeah. Yeah. Play, playing with the rules like that is kind of one of the fun of building a world like this or basing it off of something that has similar concepts. Are there some more questions came up since then? Oh, actually, you know what? I saw I saw Alpha's question earlier. I didn't get a chance to answer it. He asked if there would be coffee in the game, and the answer is yes. In fact, maybe Alpha should be in the game as one of the incarnations, and he's like some sort of brew coffee brewing master. He should have a giant watch on on his hand too. Would it be a sundial watch? Oh shit! Yes, a sundial watch exactly. It would be like a steampunk sundial watch. Everything. It's also a coffee machine. You can just like make coffee. Yeah. So we'll just put you in the we'll put you in the game, Alpha. And yes, there'll be coffee. Actually, I would love to have a lot of food in the game. I think just in general that would be an important part of like the identity of different cultures is just like introducing all that awesome food. Just like the BCR, the way it's used. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like the BCR, like John was mentioning. Actually, can they hear you when okay. because um, like that's why I'm like, oh I should probably reply in a way that but yeah just like the beast area it would be cool to have like a food thing food theory a menu i guess yeah ajna builds a restaurant in her mind or one of her incarnations builds a restaurant and she has to bring recipes to them yeah like ingredients and then like uh and then you can like have awesome food and it almost does nothing in the game it's just cool pictures of food or something actually it could do things i guess status stuff or maybe you need to make an awesome meal to in encourage another incarnation to join you and stuff like that you them, but really yeah yeah exactly they or they they are, they become they're not they're not a playable incarnation until you give them this meal and they're like yeah. okay i'll fight for you fine <laughs> okay. oh yeah oh, okay i mean anything that involves food in a game whether it's useful or not is always cool <laughs> yes, exactly. That would be amazing. Kind of wanted, kind of wanted an equivalent to Arthur C. Clarke as an incarnation. I think that'd be funny. Yeah, because he lives in Sri Lanka, but he's also like, you know, famous sci-fi novelist. So he just knows stuff. <laughs> he just yeah. <laughs> or he just knows stuff, or he's just like talking about. He's really into that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like what Raijin Raijin Ra Raijin is saying, like you know, like in Monster Hunter, giving power ups, food food power ups would be cool too. Let's see here. Why can't why can't Ajna crawl? That's more of a gameplay question, I guess, huh? Oh oh oh! I see I see. Got you. Like uh, with, like the zero mission stuff or like the morph ball. Just gonna. Yeah. Have you seen the pictures of Super Metroid? How like all the people on on Beavers are like, oh, I can't Metroid crawl until they get stuck on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's sad. Dude. That's sad to see. <laughs> what would happen to incarnation if they fell off floating island in the Nero? Oh. Um. It'll be video game logic. They'll fall from the top to the bottom. No. Ajna will have to go on another really annoying quest of her just diving down into space to pick them up. I thought it'd be video game logic. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Maybe it's video game logic where they just keep looping. You should be able to use it to your own advantage if you need to get to the top of the inner dimension just by falling. <laughs> I figure that eventually the sky will turn from spacey to sky-y, though, right? But it'll still have that, probably, that kind of looping. You get more control over yourself. Kind yeah. Or just kind of like... You, you, you've you acquired atmosphere or something like that. This incarnation is very good at creating the weather. Yeah. Are there any Skullgirls Easter eggs cameos planned for us to seek out? Um, is what one of the questions is. Uh, I, I guess I think I had some 
I had some obtuse ways to describe some of the deeper stuff in the Skullgirls world through the game. So probably that kind of cameo, and I think uh, there's probably other cameos in mind, um, depending on what we can, what would make sense, and we can get away with, or what would be clever. So that's certainly on mine. I mean, like actual character incarnations. That might be. I had an idea for something in terms of character cameos, um, but I, I don't know if it's worth mentioning right now. But per perhaps, yeah. Uh, will we be able to use incarnations outside of battle, similar to HMs in Pokemon? Is what the question is. Um, yeah, I think. What do you, I don't actually kind of thought of that yet. As opposed to like leaving them behind somewhere to take care of a quest or something. Because it could be like something like Ro or Robo and Chrono Trigger was left behind to do to yeah. tend to the forest. We could probably have some things where you have to leave them behind to, in order to do another quest. Or they're required in another quest or things like that. So uh, it's, it's possible, I would think. Yeah. Cool. And then you just, she just pulls them back in later. It's easy. Shall we... Is it weird if she has a? Is it weird if Ajna like has a love plot with one of her incarnations? Isn't that kind of weird? I feel like I don't know. Because yeah. <laughs> I know that someone here is asking, will Ajna find love maybe with one of her incarnations? I think that's kind of weird. Well. Oh, that'd be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Earl was suggesting that maybe she falls in love with a character and then realizes they're an incarnation after, and then she's like, oh, it's not going to work out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's kind of a weird question. <laughs> I feel like she's like, that's, like, that's so beyond her even thinking. Mm. She even realize it. Like, she's seeing other people doing it. She's like, what do you guys do? She's also just well. so old. Like, I mean, she's not like beyond like human emotion or anything right, like that, so, so it's not like. But maybe she's not thinking about it. She's too too busy. Yeah, exactly. Like, but you know, the, those kind of characters will always go through changes, especially that time. But you know, that's not like on her mind right now. I'm sure. Right. Also, sorry, I'm not looking at the camera as much. I'm looking at the the screen for questions. Already answered. Any time based festivals or celebrations planned for near space? The like Christmas and Halloween and Animal Crossing? <laughs> kind of cool. Which one? Oh, holiday, holiday things? Like actual time based events. Time based events sounds fun, yeah. I think that would that would be a funny thing to have. Like you go to your internal, or you go to your inner realm and you find like different things, like snow, if it's yeah. Christmas well, or something. Actual, like, in game, like the culturally relevant holidays in different regions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Like, just based on, like, if a particular holiday is occurring, like, uh, you know, like the water libation ceremony or things like that, uh, things would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Will there be trash characters that you interact with? <laughs> Sounds about right. We always need like some like can't have everyone be perfect. Definitely need like I think that some of our incarnations will be the types where you will not feel bad about forcing them to join you because you're just like kind of trying to collect them, but they might be real jerks. Because I think the incarnations would span the spectrum not only in terms of people types but also personality types. Because like not everyone is good, and like if they're like aspects of Ajna, you know, she's not a perfect person, so she's gonna be like. There's going to be good and bad to her, so, you know, the incarnations would reflect that, too. Including, like, trash ones or something. <laughs> yeah, I think, like, uh, I'm going to take a break and probably switch the mics and, in general, all that stuff. It was cool answering a lot of these questions. Uh, I'll try to write down more stuff. So that the stuff that I said earlier that you might have missed if you came in later or it was hard to understand what I was saying, like I can uh, 
I'll write down more of this stuff in a in a more coherent fashion and post it up in the near future. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, did you guys want to switch to the other mic and then we can kind of figure out where? Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna get some water and we're gonna... we'll be back in about 15 minutes. All right. He's active again. All right. Yeah. Now we got this directional mic, so. Hi. You can hear everyone. Yeah, now you can hear when I'm answering John. You can actually hear what he's saying. Hi. 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 Ah, fuck. The gang's all here. I fell off my chair. Oh, no. The people in the office right now are Earl, Richard, John, Brian, and Mike. Mike, Brian and Mike are on the other side of the wall, but I think this will pick that up too. <laughs> Even those sounds. I'm going to look at it real quick. But it's just, I see. Uh, so yeah, let's see here. Um, do any of you guys have... Any additional questions? Uh, there's probably a million. You can just scroll yeah, up. Oh, shit. I guess the chat has been going on. Well, I will try to look at that then. Uh, I think it might be easier if people just ask them again. Yeah, wait. Sorry. Uh, oh, how nice. Everyone's talking about YouTubers that... Could uh, play the game. Nice, nice. If you guys know anyone, please share the game, the prototype, and now the Linux build. Oh, yeah. Do you know any details about it? Like, who was the one that was in charge of it and everything? Like, oh. give some credits. Oh, Cybic. Cybic? Cybic. Cybic? Uh, yes. He's the, the guy. He, he was there at Evo with us, showing off the Linux build with Skullgirls. Oh, awesome. He was one of the, the hardest working volunteers when uh, it was still a volunteer project. Oh, is it good? I just, Want to point out that we didn't get to go to Evo like half the team because we were busy uh, working. Oh, you're working on this. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. sorry, sorry, guys, if yeah. you don't want to see us at Evo and came. We like to just visit for fun. I mean, next time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, actually, one of the questions here is if she ever starts developing herself, goes through changes in story, do the incarnations get a boost or something? I would believe that the incarnations getting boosts would be dependent on you doing quests for them. So it'd be like side quests to additionally strengthen incarnations so like because the incarnations they too also have story arcs and character development so reflecting that is also a part of how you level them up as a character so in addition to Ajna developing as a character when you go through the main story you'd have to go through like side stuff to help develop the other incarnations or learn more about them and that's kind of critical in Ajna's own growth is learning about these incarnations so it kind of goes hand in hand but uh, yeah it's technically separate Am I the only one who's am I the only one who's only buffering? Uh, uh, asks say. Oh no. Are we Should good on your bet? Yeah, I know that's correct. Oops. Questions that are not related to the stream. I guess people are still trying to get used to the mic. Haha! <laughs> Somebody asks, will we get to see or meet Ajna's mother? You will. You will. You'll get to see her. That, Mom's not. Mom's not. Exactly. Uh, two questions. This psychotic beverage. How long in world will Ajna's adventure be? And can incarnation see her thoughts and memories from within her inner realm? Sorry, what was that? Oh, in my how long in world will Ajna's adventure be? And can Incarnation see her thoughts and memories from within her inner realm? Um, yes, I, I think the game would, the, the journey itself, I guess this is important because there's the whole 49 day aspect to it, right? Um, in terms of what I'm thinking, it would be within, a, a, a portion of it would be within 49 days and then an event, event happens that's prior to 49 days and then, and then after that, it's not completely defined, but it would be very soon because, like, at that point, like, the story ramps up. So it'd be just past forty-nine days. It'd be like probably like fifty-something days long. I think it's like two months. Yeah, 
I wonder. I guess that's a small world that she's traveling in. But because, like you know, in ancient times, like traveling though took a long, long time. time. But you know, of course, because technology and of course magic, and because this is a different sized world than Earth itself, and because video game, um, you know, could be a thing where it's like we think it's the whole world, and then for a sequel, it's like oh, <laughs> that's just the continent of the world kind yeah. of thing. Well, of course, it is one of many worlds in oh, the multiverse. Sure. So there's always that too. Oh, and also, uh, can incarnation see your thoughts and memories from within our inner realm? Can in- oh yes, yes, they have that question. Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like, uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't like, think do you think they'd be able to see her mind? Do you think she'd be able to see their mind? Is that what you're saying? It's a one. No, I think if it's too direct it's, like that, yeah, then, then it's like then they might know too much kind of thing. It takes away from like the building the character and developing from each yeah. other. Yeah, just psychic all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more. It's more like they have to gain, gain an understanding of. It's kind of like the ability to see your past lives is something that actually requires Idi. It's actually one of the powers that Idi allows you is seeing your past lives. Um, a lot of the powers that Idi officially gives you are like ridiculous. Like some of them are like grabbing the sun from where you can see it, or like you know one of them is traveling into Sumeria or Brahma. Um, and another one is stuff like uh, the Twin Miracle, which is like fire and water at the same time. Wait, what happens if you grab the sun? Uh, what do you do after I don't know. That? I mean, it's just like you just grabbing like yeah. okay. Oh, uh, multiple bodies is another one. It's the like the Kage Bunshin style thing. Oh. That's another Idi power, and being able to walk through walls and stuff. Is this is Idi just like the original shonen manga like trope? I think I think day? like it must have gotten some. Ins- well, I mean, like you know that obviously carried over to probably to the east in some form. I'm sure. Yeah. So probably some basis of it. You know, it's probably in people's minds when they were growing up or something. Like that. Um, but some of the powers in it are pretty crazy, yeah. Oh, is the audio only one side? Mm. Oh, can you only... Oh, you mean like one ear for the speakers? Oh, is it because of the mic? Try oh, is this mic blocking? I tried talking from over there and see if it's right. actually... Does this affect how it sounds in any way? Someone's saying that it's, uh, the mic sounds only coming from the left. It sounds like it's only coming from the left. Is it only set up to... The left channel? Yeah. I have no idea. I need to. I just plugged it in directly. Do I have to like get a program or something to no be out? Meanwhile, I'll answer this question. Region or Ajin, uh asks, "Will there be customization for Ajin's inner realm?" And the answer to that is that is part of the plan. Yeah, that would be. Was it, it like indeed. a stretch goal or something though? It'd be like the kind of thing you can acquire stuff so. from the world to populate her furniture, basically. Like, oh yeah. Populate her uh, inner realm with different elements. It's always a fun part of having a hometown that you can go back to is being able to customize it so of course that would be an important part quick question since indivisible will have a lot of varying asian mythology will we ever see some philippine mythology in the game yeah that is one of the regions that i want in there um i want it to be separate from the starting region because i do believe that uh that uh, like the Pacific Island, like uh, like island, the island style of mythology is different than um, the Southeast Asian South style. So like instead of Hindu and Buddhist, it would be more stuff like the Manangal. It'd be cool to have a Manangal fight a Penangal. Um, you know, that's the that's the one that splits at the torso and has bat wings instead of the head and entrails. Awesome. So there's actually a diff- there are different creatures. There's also like um, that horse headed guy who can like cook uh, seafood in his armpits and he lives in a tree. Um, tiki Bon. Yeah, there, there, are, there are several. I, I need to double check a lot of them, actually, honestly. But um, there are, there are a lot that I would like to really play up on. Um, the Pugat, which is like this headless creature that kind of uh, stands in the corner of the room and like, uh, like often like, like to eat stuff, you have to put it through the hole in its neck and stuff like that. How inconvenient! He's a Pez dispenser. He's like a headless giant thing. Yeah, but there's a lot of really cool visuals in, uh, in a lot of those. Uh, Areas, so that's definitely one of the regions that I want to have a an an, uh, an area dedicated to. Uh, so one question is: since Indivisible will have a lot of varying Asian mythology, uh, will we ever see some Philippine? Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I just. That's what I just. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, man, sorry, I sorry. Sorry, not. Hey, I was looking for questions. Sorry. Oh no, no, that's a that's a good one though. Yeah. Uh, how about do the incarnations change as Asuna changes? Did you already cover that? I answered that one too. Yeah, okay. that's the one where uh, you'd have to do. To to learn more about their their story arcs, you have to do like side quests or something with them. Uh, 
what does the name Indivisible have to do with the story so far? You get that one right? The idea being it's kind of like a united we stand kind of thing, like uh, Ajna and her um, incarnations kind of a collectively are going to be like the thing that makes the difference. Like they, they working together as a cohesive uh, unit is a key factor. So it's like teamwork, I guess. It's a cool way of saying teamwork, I guess. Her many different aspects have to combine into her whole self. They need synergy. They need the synergy. Yeah, exactly. They need to do trust exercises and <laughs> all that stuff. But uh, this one's from Zenjutsu, uh, I think. Uh, can an incarnation leave Ajna's realm at any time, or are they locked in until Ajna lets them out? I feel like they're locked in, right? They're, they, they, can be, they can leave, but they, she has to let them leave, I believe, would be the setup for that. So yeah, I guess they'd be locked in. Really think of it that way. There's a good story reason for it all. Yeah, I mean, like it definitely helps, like have these weird implications that, like I was saying, Ajna is not completely the best person. There might be flaws in her mm-hmm. design. She might be thinking she has to hold on to things that might not necessarily be held on so tightly, or you know, that might be a way to represent that as well. Is there any reason to not be in Ajna's inner realm? I mean, it's like some kind of duty free realm. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty convenient. Uh, I mean, I guess like some some incarnations must view it that way. Others must feel like they've been taken from their home. So, you know, there are different views of their interaction with Ajna. I'm sure. Oh, someone asked: Are there any dungeons like where you can't go home and buy health, weapons, etc.? You mean dungeons, as in like, like I'm sure there'd be dungeons, isn't that kind of? You, you're talking about like in the game or something, or? Um, I think in, yeah, he's inner, asking. Inner just asking like other places where you can't use inner realm. Oh, oh, where you can't go into your inner realm. So you can't like just immediately heal in the middle of a dungeon. Oh yeah, that's a good question actually. Uh, I think we we're talking about before where there are like some places where it's locked or something. Or, like mental barriers are set up or something. That could be cool. Yeah, we could probably find a pretty decent excuse for that kind of. I thing. mean, even if there's like just a tinge of danger anywhere, she wouldn't be feel comfortable enough to meditate. It's, it's the yeah, that's true. It's another thing about that kind of relates to what does it look like when Ajna's inner inner realm. If she's actually like sitting down and closing her eyes. Perhaps it's like, oh, this is too dangerous to do it here, or like something is blocking my mind, or like yeah. as soon as you do it, an enemy hits you, or something like that. Like, it, there could be like a variety of reasons for why she can't go into her inner realm. Could be also a thing where, like, as she gets better at it, then it doesn't matter so much. But it's like an early lock, gate locking mechanism. Oh, like like she can do it while on the move normally. Other, other times, no, or or just like the ability to do it in certain areas. When she couldn't have before, yeah, like, like she gets better at it as she goes. So yeah, now yeah, it's like, that could be a nice way to like change the dynamic of like when you revisit a stage and stuff. Yeah, things like that. Plus, it could be something like where you're so stronger than the enemies there when you come back to it that it seems silly that you can't like go into meditation at that point. Yeah, exactly. Um, will there be any combination idiot super attacks? I think that's a gameplay question, but I guess that would be like a art asset question ish too, but. You mean like combination arts kind of thing, or like, or like, like kind of like a Chrono Trigger? Chrono Trigger, yeah. Yeah. Um, It'd be cool if we can do it. It would be cool, yeah. Could have some fun combinations. I think we we could do it like with the assets we have. Like if we had time for the prototype, we could have done like Razmi doing like a fire arrow. For oh, like, like have them actually do like a custom set of actions using what we have. The easiest thing would just be like having fire on everything. No. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely something we want to pursue. I imagine. <laughs> Are other characters aware of how many incarnations Ajna is holding? Can anyone see Insider from the outside? <laughs> uh, no, not by default. We could always have, say, someone is aware of like the energy or like someone who's more enlightened can see the different aspects of her in her. But by default, you're not going to see like floating head bubbles around her or anything like that. What if there's like someone, some mystic that's like, whoa, what's up with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, could always be that. <laughs> That that kind of character is like always this, cool. This, this is a monster. I'm gonna leave this area now. Or like a blind character who's like cons- and super confused. Like, is there a crowd in this room? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Will we run into any sort of moral conflicts with incarnations? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's kind of part of the whole aspect of like uh, not like every character. Not every person is like a perfect. Like, nobody's perfect. You know, like uh, Ajna will have flaws where she's gonna do actions that might not be the best or not seem like particularly reasonable or things like that you know or you might have incarnations that don't seem like they're the greatest people but they still have to join or things like that yeah like it would be the interesting side of their moral dynamic of yeah. like how they confront her situation or they argue with her yeah. that would be developing their character and everyone's character yep yep exactly 
Ugh. Someone said, I want the final boss to be in Agile's inner realm, so we can say stuff like, the final boss was in you all along. <laughs> Kappa face. Hilarious. But, uh, it, it's fun to play with, like, what we can do with the inner realm, so I'm sure we can figure out stuff. Like, we could do stuff like she captures demons and then as a training ground in her realm. You have to fight realm. them inside there. Yeah, like a... Oh, yeah, they're definitely... I think there definitely should be, like, a training room where you can just select an officer and it'll load a fight. Yeah, that's... So you, so you can practice combos and whatever. Yeah, that's a very practical thing, too. And also, you can have an incarnation who's the guy that allows you to do that, like, capture monster or, like, it's someone who sets up the training room. Monster just, tamer. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, that. like some, sort of, some sort of hunter or, like... Person, oh, like yes. a, the same guy, right? Well, you can always split the task across more iterations. Have more people. Plus, like, I always figure that there'd be things like uh, Volume One of Bestiary and then Volume right. Two in PC of Bestiary. Yeah, yeah. You know, because like they're from different regions or something like that. Because oh, okay. that, like, are different food regions too, and things like that. You know, you can have more. You can have more chef in PCs. You can have more Bestiary in PCs. I think. Be cool if like the Bestiaries are all written by different people, and then when you collect them all, they're like, oh my god, yeah. I, I've been looking for someone just like you my whole oh, life. Yeah. They work together on the Ultimate Volume. Yeah, Bestiary. yeah, exactly. Like having team ups and stuff, because like that'll help like uh, get that unification theme across and you know definitely like the sharing knowledge just increases their power Ajna is actually running for president to unify <laughs> the land um. yes as Inf Melon is uh, asking we should indeed find some convoluted way to incorporate the uh, title of the game into it Let's see, will you deliver your line like Ajna, you and your incarnations have been indivisible? Copy it all along. Uh. Exactly. <laughs> see, cause John physical pain. Therefore, we must. Oh, Gitalix asks, I'm not sure if this has been asked, but will each incarnation only have one AD power with different potencies, effects, depending on level? Potencies. Potencies. Or will they be able to do others? Uh, I mean, I, I like the idea of multiple uh, power per character, but I guess it also depends on how many characters we have, right? Because like, I guess part of it is that you choose a character based on... Right, it would kind of suck if you got like, a you can just... incarnation in the beginning that you really like, mm -hmm. but by the end of it, they only have the same moveset, and you're like, oh, what the uh, hell that, guys have Yeah, that's true. Like Being able to level up and get more options with them. But at the same good. time, isn't that the point of having a, the variety so you can choose how your battle style works? I guess what maybe like um, yeah, that that is definitely part of it. But you could probably also just still have at least one or two options per character, or maybe maybe what it is is when they level up, it's like a stronger version of that or something like yeah, that. Test. So it's still the same function, but it just does more damage or something, so it can keep up with uh, the power levels of the enemies at that point or something. Oh, we should ask Mike. Too. Yeah, I mean that's also yeah. leaning more towards gameplay anyway. But I mean conceptually, I like the idea of. More stuff, so as be yeah, yeah. possible. People talking about plot ideas. It's always fun to see what speculation is. Wait, do we even have ads running on this? Do we set up? I don't believe we do. Oh, sorry, I don't guys. Think we have subscriptions or. or any ads yeah, that you're watching, works. yeah. Any ads that you're watching on the stream is are not funding anything. They're just funding Twitch, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We should uh, figure out. That. I'm not, we should become a partner. Yeah. How do you set up all that stuff? If you guys are familiar with Twitch and can help us out, can you give us advice on how to set this up so we have subscribe subscription models and whatever, right? And like icons and things. How do you, how do, you do all that? Uh, you s yeah. Someone please contact us and help us out. Okay, one of the questions here is what's the deal with Ajna's headpiece and why does it transform during haircut, uh, the haircut form? So Ajna's headpiece is uh, prayer beads, actually, so she's wearing on her head. But basically, uh, that was passed on to her from her father figure, uh, who basically, uh, he, she basically is supposed to use it to help her with meditation and stuff. Like, it's like to help count prayers and stuff, um, as is the function of prayer beads in general. But she also uses them to keep count of her incarnations. So it's kind of like, they kind of like sort of represent her incarnations in a sense. And uh, when she powers up, like they gain like a, they, they get a more significant form when she's in her wrathful deity form. Just It also kind of looks more epic, I guess, when you have like these uh, prayer bead spheres kind of encircling her. So it's kind of like for a cool visual, but it's also 
uh, it, they also symbolize the incarnations. Or was their dad like, hey, use this and like meditate with it? She was like, huh? I'm just gonna put it on my head, whatever. <laughs> yeah, does it like, go oh, like this? No. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's also a sentimental value to her because, uh, you know, like, it's like it reminds her of her father and stuff. So, it's important. Are Zebe, Razmi, and Tungar the main incarnations in terms of story, or will the incarnations not be that involved in the main plot as characters? Um, so they are um, uh, currently. How are thinking about it? They are they are uh, prominent characters in the story, but not like the the central central ones, like not the core ones. Though I think like it's fun thinking about them, so it's cool having them as like prominent. Like they have their own stories, and like they're pretty prominent in terms of how they interact with Ajna. But for example, like Dar is like pretty important for the way things start in that story, and um, she'll run into other incarnations that are also kind of important for her development as a character. But that also includes Razmi and those guys. So, I mean, gameplay wise, we chose them for the prototype because they're the most interesting and like examples of all the mechanics that we'd introduce in the game too. But yeah, how cool would they be in game? up guys ask any questions let's see here. are there any areas that Arjuna might be poorly received due to political situation um yeah I would think so I would think that you know it's probably like a, the world has a lot of political tensions to it you probably have to deal with like that kind of stuff uh, to some extent I mean I'm trying to think of a specific example. I had one in mind, but I forgot. Uh, I mean, obviously, she's already like kind of waging war against the warlord of her own country. So, like anyone associated with him would probably, you know, be automatic conflict. So, I guess there's that too, at least. I think one cool aspect of the game that we wanted to do was that it's it's like in the beginning, all the uh, conflicts are really small and like really personal. But then as she keeps seeing more of the world and like broadening her own view, she realizes like, oh no, there's more going on in this world. And, yeah. And as, as a Learning player... Learning more of the world. Yeah, yeah. As a, you know, both you and Ashna learn more about the world at the same time as she starts to explore more. Yeah, and you realize like, oh wow, this world is really big and there's a lot of stuff happening and there's turmoil it's here. It's more complicated than what she initially thought kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It's not just all black and white. It's very like, the world is gray. Yeah, yeah. It's like her. things that things that seem like good versus evil have more complications to them as she gets further into the truth behind things. Gravel Street 97 says, any plans for crazy plot twists? There are bait and switch and things, yeah, plot twists, maybe. I would say that, like, that's why we, we try our best to answer as many questions as we can without spoiling too much. Yeah, that's a rough area, right? Because, like... Right, because we want, we, want we want to tell you more about this world, but we also want you to be surprised if it were to happen, you know? Uh, Zenjitsu asks if it's uh, how many continents are in the world or if it's one typical big super JRPG supercontinent. It's so it'll be mostly like a large landmass, but there'll also be things like islands, like kind of like so we can have the Philippine equivalent. There be there are some island hopping elements, but it's mostly large large landmass with uh, Sumeru in the middle. Also because that makes the whole Metroidvania element of it a little easier to express because like um, sea hopping and going from island to island is awesome and I think that's, I would love to have that. But in addition to that, you still need obviously like large sections of the world being able to connect to each other. Got to be able to go from one map, dungeon map to yeah. the next one. But of course we'll also have like ley line equivalents like teleportation areas, but only when you discover them and then you can kind of go back to previously discovered ones. <laughs> so if she's able to teleport somewhere like us using her inner realm we should just suck into herself <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Thump. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh no, I guess at that point she just like turn Herica form and then like fly there or something, right? Oh yeah, like if you're powered up enough, she just just will just dash everywhere. Maybe or, like, people just, just like, to teleport. Yeah, teleport somewhere. Yeah, I think it would be like that'd be cool. Like uh, if she had an incarnation that was like some sort of master at teleporting or something like, and then she like learns how to go from one place to another really fast, like one of the by that'd be like near the end of the game where you're trying to go to do all the side quests but you don't want to travel the world and you yeah. can just basically point and click to other parts of the world it's always good when it's like okay I've already explored this place like I just need to get here to do the thing and then go here and then some of the quests involve jumping all over the world and stuff right <laughs> Felix Nemes asks what, is, what is, does a square in that world diagram represent? Oh, sorry. This one? This square is Sumeria. Uh, world uh, Mount Meru. It's basically a, it's basically the side, the top view of this thing. So this is the same, this is the same uh, structure. This is the what the world is shaped like basically. So this is like the world from a top view. What it would look like if you were to see it from like a map. And this is like from a side view, I guess. If you want to think of it that way. This is this is the demonstrate what the shape of Sumeria is. It's kind of like an hourglass where it gets narrow in the middle. I'll write that down this is also known as Mount Mary. You guys are curious about it. Oh, Zenjutsu wants you to step aside so he can take a screenshot. Oh, shit. Well, since there's a delay, he might have gotten a screenshot already. Thanks for stopping by, Shock Dingo. <laughs> Good seeing you. What's up, dudes? Any questions? Anything? Where do the character names come from, and do they have meanings behind uh, meaning behind them? Uh, so, like Rosmi's means bright. Or uh, like radiant, like like you know, light in terms of uh, in in Sanskrit. But it's kind of an ironic name because her personality is so dour, but it's also kind of appropriate because she has flames associated with her. Uh, Ajna is named after the sixth chakra point, which is your mind's eye, which is your mind's eye, which is on your uh, basically where your pituitary, pituitary gland is. Uh, so you know, it's the reference to the fact that she has like that third eye when she goes through her haircut form, as well as other. Uh, implications and stuff. Uh, Tungar Tungar's means Tungar's name means lofty, high. It's kind of like uh, play off the fact that he's short, but he's also like really sturdy, and strong. And Zebe is Zebe originally was uh, the original name of uh, Jebe, which is actually uh, a famous general that was under um, Genghis Khan, and that name means arrow. So it's kind of a, it's a slight play on that because Jebe. When you spell it out, it has a slang meaning in Spanish, if I remember right. I think it meant like nut or something. Oh, yeah. I think that's why we changed it to Zebe instead. Because otherwise people would just be like, why is he spot in Spanish? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's always kind of tricky when like things across different languages have like different different meanings. Oh, man. If we kept it that, he would be the butt of every joke, right? Hey. Ah. Who are your favorite incarnations so far, Alex? Uh, are you, I guess, like, among the revealed ones, or, like, because I guess a lot of people probably saw the trailer, because there's a bunch in there, too. Yeah. Or, uh, among the revealed ones, I think my favorite's Razmi, um, among the, well, I guess there's also additional revealed ones. I also like Thorani. Um, among the ones that aren't revealed yet, I liked Naga Rider, I guess. Yeah. And, um. Trying to think who else would be my one of my favorites. Well, the Amazon that's not shown yet either. I guess she's just one of my favorites. <laughs> someone said harmless one too. Yeah. Someone said Zebe is his poor kid's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Zebe. Oh shit! I have a real question. Why the proto prototype boss didn't kill Rody? Why is Rody still alive after the prototype? Is he a monster too? <laughs> Did he use the wall glitch thingy? Cap 
Wait, not Pat's face. Someone else's face. Exactly. Who who knows? Roti is highly mysterious. What is what is Roti's true intentions? Just not just kidding. Roti um, trained with the Asnash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, survival training. Yeah, exactly. Was he able to survive? Or knows how to do the passive fist route. totally have that microphone now. Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of imagined it that for the prototype, uh, the statue only comes alive because it's Ajna. Oh, like oh, it reacted yeah. to Ajna. So it's just the statue when Roti passes it. Oh, and it, it's my chill. Thing. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. Notices the ED power coming from her. Senses the ED power. Wants, wants to eat her. Well, yeah, so the, the monster there, like it's basically consumed the other like monsters in that Place, right? or just come oh, the yeah, it, like the guardian lions that were guarding that temple, it killed them. Because it also spews out enemies out of its mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has them with her, with it. Um, you might also notice that like a lot of the Chinte statues that are in the demo, like are like defa- defaced, like they like they destroy them along the way and stuff. The ones on the walkway are, but the ones in the like, actual. The ones along the pathway are, but then the ones on the walkway, I guess they just ignored or something. It's just too pretty. <laughs> no, <they> just, yeah. <laughs> They just couldn't do it. Maybe they tried. They were hurrying, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, maybe the Belu swords couldn't reach all the way. <laughs> in the it's, it's in the background, you know? It's, yeah. it's not in the foreground, so they couldn't reach it. It's like another dimension. <laughs> just got here. Was there an explanation for combination of old school weapons and new? Like time period or how advanced the world actually is compared to? Oh, that's, that's all explanate. Peck, peck Ampy? Or... That's all things we explained in the last chapter or last the video. Yeah, the earlier stream. Uh, but yeah, basically to, to summarize that, like the West has like steampunk technology that's far more advanced than the rest, but the rest of the world still has elements of stuff. Especially like the East still has like gunpowder and stuff. Um, and the South uses like a lot of magic. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess I would I guess I would say that there's a slight uneven distribution of technology, uh, especially because the West is going through like a premature, uh, accelerated. Industrial Revolution. Do the rest of the world believe in this reincarnation and the stuff? Uh, I would say that they probably are aware of something. I mean, Sumeru is visible from all angles, so they have different interpretations of what it is. Um, yeah, it'd be like anything. going around the world and seeing people's other inter- interpretations of that. Yeah, their religions and like how they see this world. And yeah, yeah. Like whether they consider that reincarnation, like when someone is born in in Sumeru, or if that's actually like just like a different world altogether, and like that's heaven when you go to there. Uh, yeah, maybe like being born in heaven is supposed to at some form of a reincarnation cycle. I think that'd be the fun part of going to different lands too, seeing how seeing how they interpret things, how yeah. different the culture is and stuff. Yeah. One last question before I get back to class. How do you make all these gorgeous character designs, Alex? I really love how Tongar's turban turns into whip-like sword weapon. Oh, thanks. Uh, though that definitely is like, you know, thanks to also John here, like with animating all that stuff, like going through that. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I'm not exactly sure. That, I guess that I just thought it'd be like that, that weapon is a real weapon, by the way, the Urumi, and I just thought it would be like cool to extend. Extend that uh, that uh, design that idea to like almost like an absurd level of making it like a, a turban, like something to wear, and then just like equip it and suddenly attack. Like I thought that'd be like a pretty cool concept to have, and it, just the idea of like uh, characters that are really shape based. So he's like a really stout, dense, uh, small character, but he's got this incredibly long weapon. So it's just like this like really distinct shape when he's attacking. Can kind you of, say that characters that were really what distinct shapes or something? Ah, I heard something totally different. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hopefully it came out <laughs> properly on the... I heard characters that were distinctly shit-faced. Oh, what? Right. They're just all drunk all the time? Yeah, yes, all that's, that's the secret, is that they just are completely wasted. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, yeah, you know... This like, is my contribution. <laughs> uh, was that... Were there any questions? Will there be any lol huge enemies in the game? Oh yeah, definitely. We gotta have big, huge bosses. We got the tech for it. We can yeah. totally do crazy scaling. Bosses that are way bigger than the screen. So. Or just like, yeah, just, just in general, just huge. Huge bosses are always like one of the best things in the game. Uh, 
someone said, in the West, ADA is bottled and sold for $5 per meter. <laughs> I think develop their technology and figure out a way to do it. It'd be interesting. To manifest it or something. Yeah, have like a factory of it. They would have like a... Well, so here's the thing. Like uh, Soma, for example, is... Um, Soma is people's attempts at like getting more powerful or getting like better magic or getting more enlightenment. Um, but it's like a, sh- a material shortcut. So, I mean, obviously one of the themes being is like the West's... The West's attempts at solutions are very materialistic. Um, Just like and, a Western medicine versus yeah, yeah, medicine. Yeah, yeah, like that kind of thing. Um, or, you know, just like, uh, so like instead of like meditation or like, you know, pra- proper practice and stuff, like trying to shortcut by using drugs or something, like, and then that backfires on those who are using the Soma and they just end up becoming like addicted monsters that like transform because when Ajna's going through her quest, some of the enemies that she fights are basically like anointed people who, who have like, uh, basically like a monster form, like you fight them and then like they transform into this monster form and they, they, they are like addicts to this Soma stuff and that's kind of like a, one of the plot points that comes up uh, especially when she's in the, the southern regions of her story has anyone tried climbing Sumaru? Um, it's really hard to get into actually it's like kind of blocked off for most people I would say that it would be interesting to think of stories of people who have attempted to enter and or whether they've succeeded or not um, and yeah. there are cases of people being able to get in I mean like it's important to the, the story prior to you know, because like the, the traveler managed to stop Kala at the at the base of Sumeria, he was able to enter into Sumeria to get there. Um, the each corner, each corner of the of Sumeria has like a gar- a gate, but it's guarded by like a dragon. So there'd be like each each has like the four dragons that corner that cover the corners of the world. Um, and you know, like one of, like for example, the one in the south would be like the golden dragon, and then the one on the the east would be like the dragon of the hills. And then the one in the north would be the feathered dragon, and then the dragon of the west would be the red dragon. So like something like that. Would be another element that you'd have to run into, like fighting those dragons or interacting with them in one way or another. Yeah, it'd be cool to see also like what happened to those, like their histories. Yeah. If there's like a region where like someone already killed it and like absorbed the power, so they become a living dragon of some yeah, sort or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Like they somehow acquired the power of it, or like what exactly is. Uh, uh, befallen their fate, especially since Ajna had attacked. You know, maybe they got inter- they got in- uh, influenced by her, or like attacked by her, or you know, like if someone like had acquired their power or something. Yeah, yeah. cool. To also, get the yeah ecosystems working. Like, if we, what you're doing is causing a flux in other countries and things like you said. You did. Conversations. Uh, Inf Melum asks, "Will there be dedicated boss themes, character themes, town themes?" I think we're gonna try to get music for everything, right? Yeah, that would be ideal. I mean, obviously. Uh, that's what we have the, but uh, that's why we're asking for the budget so we can get full time big full game music. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get all the art. Get all the music. What? Is she that big thing that wrecked Ajna's town? I think is one of the questions. Uh, the if you're talking about what's in that giant vertical pan in the trailer, the thing at the top is Kala. Yeah, so that's that's a glance of like one of her forms. I think the image is also like metaphorical. It's like she's not. Yeah, actually it's, not, it's not literal. <laughs> like it's one of those cool montage things. Like the only literal part is the bottom part. Everything else up is representative. You'll see also there um, Raksasha, and you'll see Ravanavar in there. Um, so it's kind of like a glance at like the power levels that uh, Ajna will have to fight through in her story arc. Will the protagonists have human companions on her journey, or will it just be incarnations? Uh, I she would have friends that are not incarnations that help her along the way, but they probably will not like be joining her in terms of in battle. It would be kind of like NPCs that give her guidance in terms of where to go next or someone she needs to talk to to figure. But yeah, like, ter- oh, sorry. Oh. I mean, like, we probably should have the mechanic of the ability of a character to follow her. Because, yeah. like, there will probably be things where she needs to escort someone to safety, or they might actually help her for that one quest, but they're not actually one of her incarnations. Like, especially at the beginning, if, like, right. um, her father is teaching her how to train, maybe it'd be cool if he was, like, jumping along with her as she's going through, like, the first stage and stuff like that. 
So there, there should probably be a check for that kind of thing. So I think story wise, though, like she, she wouldn't want people to be with her because she's like Stainish. the trained fighter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's I mean, demons and things. Yeah, there's definitely that too. But like, for example, like um, if she runs into people that that her father knew later on, and like maybe they can, maybe they too are good warriors and they can help her with something, whether it's guidance or just like gu- uh, leading her to another area or some sort of escort or something. Right. Oh, sorry guys. I guess the mic is still not. We'll fix the mic next time we stream, but for now. Oh, is it kind of like hard to hear? No, it's doing the left side thing. Oh, it I see. sounds like coming from the left side for people listening. about Skullgirls things. Mm. <laughs> What's up, dudes? How are you doing, Earl? Oh, I'm doing okay. Trying to... I'm gonna... We just... Oh, we should talk about that on stream. We just... Uh, Why don't you do it in front of the camera, then? Oh, sure. Do you want to be okay. fancy? Yeah? Fancy. I'll read off this list off my laptop. Oh my god. Hi. Oh yeah, the camera's over here. Hi. Hey, what's up? Uh, so, we just added a new tier to the campaign. Um, it's at the $350 tier. In addition to the physical game, the taper plushie, the physical OST, and other stuff, um, you get a recorded voicemail uh, or other type of message from any of these following voice actors. This is a long list. Uh, Rich Brown, Christine Marie Campanos, Aaron Fitzgerald, Kyle Hebert, um, Kai Kennedy, Cassandra Lee, Daniel Ma- Danielle McRae, Eric Mendez, Matt Mercer, Laura Post, Patrick Seats, uh, Christopher Smith, KG Tang, Kim Tran, Josh Tomar, or Christina V. Um, Dang. Any one of those. Thanks, guys. Yeah, they they've all worked with us with, for Skullgirls, uh, and they were uh, generous enough to agree to to record some messages for backers. So. Uh, uh, feel free to donate to that tier or upgrade if you are interested. Um, they may or may not uh, end up performing in Indivisible. That's yet to be seen. Um, but uh, yeah, we hope uh, you enjoy that. Uh, also, if you hadn't heard already and you're on Linux, uh, the Linux version is available. So you can go play that on your Linux system and not have to run Indivisible on, through Wine or whatever you're using. Um, Hooray, yeah. Uh, now we're focusing on getting the Mac version out, too. So, awesome. Then I can play it. Yeah. <laughs> Half of our team can actually <laughs> play the prototype. That's pretty rad. Yeah, yeah people seem excited that the uh, launch version is out. Do y'all have any other questions here? Let's see. So the voices in the prototype the same that you'll have in the final version? Uh, right now, the voices in the prototype are placeholder, but we'll definitely be considering the voice actors that we used. I mean, we'll probably do the more proper process of like an audition and choosing between several voices because in order to get the voices in for the prototype, we kind of just fast-tracked and just went through uh, like uh, whoever uh, we had on mind. I mean, in terms of like... You know, Christina was our, is our voice director, and she had like a lot of recommendations, and uh, we just went with with that for now. They were they're really good, but uh, we definitely will want to do a more proper process uh, when the time comes. Someone said, "I want Tonga to tell me that I'm strong and cool." <laughs> that, is, that is a good motivation. <laughs> I do I, I do feel like I would be more confident if, if that guy <laughs> was. Uh, he'd be like, "You are good and cool." Nope. <laughs> DJs are asking, I guess, uh, for Filipino mythology, and that is indeed on the list, so you don't have to worry about that, man. We got it. Can you give him a taste? A taste are, of you, it? are there any, like, Do you want uh, any myths that you are already on your radar? Uh, I mean, I was kind of, I was eventually going to have a minor doll in there somewhere. I can't think of a drawing right now, but this guy, this girl, I guess, right there. 
Oh yeah. Yes. DJ, can you say that on the uh, what's the name of that guy? Manangal. Manangal. Given there's going to be a lot of incarnations, how many different VAs do you expect to end up using? Uh, that's a good question too, because we probably we probably need to do at least a few repeats, huh? But I think we're trying to do as many. I think only the ones things. that are. Playable are the ones that would need voices the most. Everyone else would just need like a grunt or two or like a. Yeah, it'd probably be like that kind of sound kind of thing. Well, I mean, like when you when you get an incarnation in your party, will they like say like, hey, all right? Something oh, that's like that. true. In that case, there'll be like hundreds of thousands of voices. Who knows? Oh yeah, will there be any VAs joining a stream? Oh yeah, I definitely. We, when we have some of our bigger. Uh, Streams in evenings. We haven't announced any of those yet, but we'll be inviting some uh, some of the VAs. <laughs> Alpha says, "Put a tick along." Oh yeah, that's the horse headed guy I was talking about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like uh, we'll probably have to figure out how exactly best to show that monster or like any. Uh, there's there's a lot though. There's definitely. I know that. Do uh, you remember Dave? Yeah, uh, Um He he was talking about how he had like a book of like a really cool like collection of them. You can probably take a look at that. We're definitely still like doing a lot of research when it comes to figuring out like which uh, creatures to include. We have like a lot of like resources that we're we're looking into, and definitely the kind of thing that I'd love to dedicate as much time as possible doing like pre pre production and research and development on. Now, that includes like both both Filipino. Monsters, obviously, as, as we're talking about, as well as, like, um, you know, different regions, like Arabic ones, uh, uh, Aborigine ones, uh, African ones, you know, just Mongolian stuff. Uh, Tibetan stuff's always been fascinating. Oh, awesome. Through that, How's it that going? Anymore. Back up to the poly members that we were at? Sorry, that's our, our neighbors. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, just, there's, there's tons of stuff that we would love to put in. It's, it's, in fact, it's actually kind of tricky to, to try to fit all the stuff in, but there's like so much that we would love to include. We have to just find the best ways to include all of that. I mean, like I still want the emphasis to be on the, the core structure of it being that uh, Dharmic religion and like, like uh, you know, Southeast Asian Buddhist and Hindu uh, elements, but definitely a lot of the different regions would have stuff that we'd be researching as well. Yeah. Is there any other questions here? Uh, any cultural stories that influence indivisible story-wise? I guess that's what exactly we've been kind of going over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like those elements. Like, um, I definitely wanted to look at like uh, the story of Buddha as examples of like. There's actually, um, for example, Naga Writer actually has some references to one of Buddha's followers. Um, you'll I'll probably talk, mention more about that uh, when he gets revealed. But uh, you know, different different stories like. like Buddha's story and like uh, his uh, different uh, followers and they, they also have kind of their own stories and like when they when they uh, and the quests that he's the adventures that he goes on also are kind of interesting elements to play off of but you know it's, it's kind of a mix of like just acquiring those elements but kind of incorporating it into this story that we overall had in mind so we have this story that we're trying to put together but we also want to have like cool little references to other things that we've been looking up in there so yeah, kind of, kind of mix, right? like how we're designing the monsters and the characters like just anything that's interesting we take pieces of that and yeah. we try to integrate it into the story as like quests and things yeah yeah, yeah like how best to fit it in yeah. it would be interesting if there's like a uh, incarnation that like guides you towards a path of Buddha without you realizing like you know collect these many like right. lotus blossom kind of things or like real kind of metaphorical teachings or yeah yeah and by the end of it you're like oh wait I'm doing exactly the same kind of path or training I had one. I had one idea for a, a side quest. I don't know if it's a, if it's better to mention it now or just like let it kind of happen. But like something that plays off of the parable of the poison arrow. But um, you know, people can look that up if they want. But it, it's kind of like a funny like fake quest in a sense, because uh, the parable of the poison arrow is about like um, asking questions that are pointless basically, because it's like this guy gets shot by an arrow, it's poisoned, and there's a doctor that can cure him like right there and, but he refuses to get cured until he knows who fired the arrow and where the poison came from and where the family members of the guy who fired the arrow 
and then by the time you find out all these questions, these answers, he's gonna be dead. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know playing off of that kind of like theme would be fun in like one of the side quests. You know? and this guy's got a poison arrow in him, and you have to go find out some stuff from him. But by the time you get back to him, he's dead or something. Like that. You don't get any reward <laughs> as a result. Yeah, no, you mean you can maybe get the poison arrow or something? Uh, you, you get some sort of item from it, but like the the, the lesson behind it is something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. That, that's just like a, this, that is actually like a, kind of an example of what I'm talking about. Even though that was a particularly absurd one, I just found it kind of a humorous story when I was reading it. Let's see what other questions we got here. Would power creep be a problem with having many incarnations, like ones you get earlier becoming more? useless as you progress or will they all be useful the idea would be that they are all useful I think that's one of the reasons why we don't have like leveling in terms of numbers and grinding as much more than or that like you know there would be some way to make sure that all the playable incarnations have a function to them in addition to not just being getting the bigger numbers but maybe the way they hit would be more in tune with how you want to do your combos and stuff I believe that would be the approach that we would try to to take with them just to make sure that you don't get characters that you get from the beginning suddenly becoming useless by the end like they all have different play styles. Yeah, exactly. Like different play styles. So whatever works best for you. But yeah, if you have more gameplay specific questions, you should save it for tomorrow's stream with Mike. Yeah, yeah. Because he'll answer all that along with whatever else he's doing. What is he doing? <laughs> well, he's gonna be implementing a thing and giving a shot at doing a pacifist run of the prototype. Ooh. Passive run being where you get through the entire game with, or get through the entire prototype without uh, engaging any enemies. And it's made famous by Alpha. Oh yes. <laughs> this one guy says, "If Tungar believes my team, destroy me because I would be nuts." <laughs> <laughs> Tungar love so exactly. strong. Exactly. Sometimes you gotta commit. Indivisible ends in a dance number like Bayonetta. Should have music. Good. That'd be cool. Uh, would we ask Kikuta for a, a, like a musical style kind <laughs> yeah. of thing? I would love that. That'd be crazy. I would love to. I'd love to see that. I think that would be great. Yeah, musical stuff like just just a lot of music in the game would be a good thing to have too. Personal incarnation that's just a musician. Yeah, of course, definitely. You could change the background music of your inner realm kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking even just like uh, OST kind of thing, like music box, but being able to change music in places would be really cool too. Like, uh, depending on, like, you already find like remixes of things in there or something like that. That would be really awesome. Yeah. Actually, some of the NPC incarnations that I was sketching out were music related. I should uh, probably uh, finish a few of those so that we can show them online too. Probably among the revealing ones, the ones to reveal. Are you guys asking which or answering which incarnations are your favorites? Oh no! Actually, I, I was uh, uh, ask, uh, mentioning about uh, music because of music. Oh, 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 oh gotcha. Um, what somebody if, asked what our per, our Lab Zero's personal oh, okay. incarnations were. Uh, oh, I guess uh, somebody answered, asked that earlier. Huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, did you guys have answers then too? Yeah, we have answers. Uh, yeah. I like uh, I like Dar. Okay. A lot. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, like, cool. very weapon? protagonist looking even though he's a villain it's yeah. genius. Like, what, how does the weapon work Cause it's like a kind of like a paddle thing it's a it's a bladed weapon it's actually a, the reason why his name is Dar is because it's like kind of like a da, Dao sword uh -huh. like there's this Burmese uh, version of that type of sword where it kind of has like a it's kind of that particular shape it's like pretty almost distinct like it's still yeah it's, it, but it's like kind of like a giant machete knife almost like, uh -oh. because that's still that's still a bladed weapon uh -huh. at the end but it's like, more for like it's is just, it more for like chopping or is it slicing still um I think it's more for chopping, uh -huh. but I should look into that more. It's also not as huge as the one that he has. Uh, it's always from anime-ized scale. Monster <laughs> trays, yeah, it's just scaled up. It's but like, uh, what's his name from Kenshin, right? He had that sword. That oh, yeah, yeah. Sword. That was the, uh, oh, Sanosuke's weapon, I forgot what it was called, but that horse cleaver one. Yeah. But, no, it's it's not supposed to be that big. Like, the, they're, they're more like a normal, like, broadsword kind of shape. Uh, I can show you the pictures of it later. It's, it's pretty cool looking, actually. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's basically what his weapon's based off of. Uh, I like Tungar a lot. Tungar? He's pretty cool. Yeah, he's a like He has a great look, and his uh, weapon's very unique. He's a uh, very dense, iconic looking. 
Japanese. I like that as a his handle on a sword looks kind of like a Gundam almost. Oh yeah, yeah, that was like like it's like a crest, right, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of the. It's a like it makes sense in terms of like where to place it, kind of thing, I guess. Right. Um, plus, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> And you can do this like signature kind of <laughs> kind of thing. It feels like anime shoots. or something, yeah. It's yeah. like and then have a flash combined. Yeah, exactly, the flash. Will there be non combative incarnations for quest story purposes? Uh, the answer to that is yes. You can see a few examples of them in the campaign, actually. Uh, you'll see that image with like four of them. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of you can kind of get a sense that not all the incarnations are fighters. Just kind of like how some incarnations are good and some are bad. Not all of them are warriors. So you'll have like scholar ones. You'll have more like trying to figure out things from a more research perspective or more spiritual ones or you know things like that. Um, I think the majority are going to be non-combative, right? I guess based on the way the numbers work out, actually a, a huge portion of them, yeah, a majority of them even would be non-combative. Uh, it also depends on how many we can get done total in general, but uh, yeah. at least the non-combative ones have less required of them than the combative ones. So in a sense, they're easy to make. Because also they're like they're for your progress, your power up progression. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because like you know, it's not like you're finding new weapons. Like you find yeah. a new incarnation that teaches you how to do it better. Yeah. Or it's like the equivalent of finding um, like heart tanks or like energy tanks in Metroid. Yeah. And stuff. So well, not heart tanks, but. Because energy tanks and hard so like energy tanks are like missile upgrades in in um, Metroid. Um, someone asked in the trailer. I noticed Ajna's dad has scars similar to Tongar's. Is that significant at all, or is it an arc choice? Um, it happened. It's because of a particular event that happens to it happened to him. Um, they're not. It's not particularly related to Tongar's scars. I just like to draw scars on a lot of characters. Apparently, uh, t- for Tongar's case, it's kind of like. You can't tell if those are from battle or from practice of his weapon. So that's more of a, like a humorous kind of weird detail to Tungar's character. In terms of uh, Ajna's father, it's um, more of a story related. For him, it's a hundred percent. You know, it's he's he was from battle and he got those guys. Yeah, he got this from. That's definitely an injury. Yeah, he's definitely messed up because of because of battle. Whereas Tungar, he might pass it off as a battle injury, but you know. <laughs> it was because he was practicing or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I like about his character too. He seems like humorous, but also like proud and yeah. He's like he could you could hang out with him. He'd be cool. Be kind of hearty. I kind of want to be like a kind of want some of the characters or the vibe to be like you know like One Piece esque kind of like that kind of thing where yeah, there's definitely. characters that have like cool moments, but they're also kind of ridiculous and very hearty and stuff. <laughs> very cool, but also not afraid to be really stupid. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one of my favorite things about One Piece is that it's just like. It's badass and like epic and all that, but it's also like can be incredibly dumb. But like <laughs> both of those at the same time, and that's my favorite kind of combination. Oh yeah, like Frankie is the best epitome of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this man. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. So all the incarnations being revealed will be fighters? I guess we could. We could reveal more than fighters. I think we should probably. Uh, I have I have concepts of non-fighter uh, uh, incarnations. Uh, the ones that are on the list that we currently have, uh, they just happen to be the ones that I had on hand, but I, we also have more concepts. We're probably going to be going over more of them um, during this week, I think, right? Is that the plan? Yeah, I guess like we just... Consider the fighter ones the most interesting. Yeah, I just, I just, just the way I think, at least personally, like I just tend to think of like, oh, cool weapon, and like you know, like uh, you know, a lot of people like the the ones who do all the cool actiony stuff, right? You know, but obviously we'll also have more incarnations that are more the support side, or just like characters that are people that Arjun runs into on a quest. Yeah, would people be interested in seeing meeting like the musician incarnation or the shopkeeper incarnation? I think I think those are fun. They yeah. can be like there can be some really fun concepts that come out from things like that. So, yeah. so I think like it'd be good to have those included as well. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, like uh, some of the one, maybe even including like more details on the ones that have been kind of shown in the in the campaign because we have like four images of four examples like the blacksmith lady and the yeah. storyteller guy. And, uh, well, include those in the yeah. Lineup. I'll probably put it in the lineup. Yeah. yeah. Then, 
our lineup is quite long, actually, especially now that we're going to start introducing them at every 50k instead of 100k. So we're going to have more incarnations to show. Or incarnation concepts, I guess I should say, technically. Yeah. Because remember, guys, everything is to be determined. Though. Yeah. <laughs> What's your stance on mini games? Uh, I I'm I'm cool with them, but I also know that like um, that depends on like what the others are thinking. I think like it'd be fun to have like incarnations that are associated with things. Like again, we were mentioning food before. Like if there was like a cooking mini game or something, or like even just like um, things as simple as looking at a mandala, like. Just like just like zoning out and staring at it, but that's not really a mini game. More than it's just like a random little extra thing. Yeah, that'd be cool but if there's like an incarnation that tells you to go search for details somewhere, so you like re-explore dungeons and you notice things that you wouldn't notice otherwise. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 tons of little cool little things we could we could do. It could even be like no. stuff like. Which like yeah. Brian, they hear you. Oh, different thing. things. This thing. Not so good, but the update or the tier. Just pointing it out. That. This is the update. No, it's not update. Oh, okay. One mini game that I like, but it's not really a mini game, but it's in the prototype as it is now, is where you can juggle enemies after, <laughs> they're, after they're dead. Oh yeah, that's always fun to do. So, in the final game, it'd be nice if we have some kind of like golfing. Yeah, exactly. Game. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, hungry ghost golf or something. Yeah, you just keep trying to knock them into as Harvey. far away. Maybe like that bike game where you not a not a crash. Oh yeah. <laughs> or a pachinko mini game as a kid. Pander says, oh, "Man, Are there any mythologies that you like the idea of, but haven't been able to decide on a character design for yet?" Um, I guess a lot of the mythology ideas also revolve around like cool monsters that I want to include in there. So those are not necessarily incarnations anyway, more than they are um, in the game somehow. But there are a couple that I I was thinking about having character designs for yet, but I haven't quite yet. Um, I'm trying to remember their name, but there's these two lizard brothers from Aborigine, uh, Australian mythology. Like mm -hmm. these two lizard brothers that use boomerangs, and they castrate this one monster from the moon. Like that was trying to like uh, <laughs> capture women and stuff. Like so they castrated him. And I thought like yeah, we got these two lizard brothers with a boomerang that fighting this moon good. monster. That was kind of kind of cool. <laughs> but how to incorporate that? If anything, yeah, could make it to a monster of some sort. Well, the moon guy, at least, yeah. Oh, but or it could be like a corrupted version, so it's a monster. Oh, yeah, I guess you could do that, too, yeah. Like, I just like the idea of two lizard brothers on your side or something. Boomerang, <laughs> boomerang wielding. Boomerang bros. Man, I gotta, I gotta look up what the names were again. But I, when I was reading the description, I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So now they're all commenting on the loud-ass can opening, Richard. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Like when you open oh, the yeah. can. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Got them rock star powering up. <laughs> I guess we have a few more minutes. Maybe we'll do a few more questions. Let's see. Anyone else have any last minute questions? I love Ash and a character, but just curious, what made you decide to go with the female lead? Oh, uh, um, well, for me personally, like I mean, I, I saw when when Peter was initially describing the idea, it was already a female character. Yeah. I had no ob ob objection to that. Uh, for me personally, I, I just like female heroes. I think that's just like interesting. Yeah. So it's like it's more fun to draw, I guess, honestly. And also, it's just like um, you know, obviously, there's like that that aspect of it's definitely more of an uphill battle for them to fight. So that in inherently has more conflict to it. And I think it's just I think it's just cool. Um, yeah. I always notice in a lot of vanilla or titles, there's a lot of female protagonists, and I always thought that was cool. Like, that, was, that was neat. And um, I guess the, I guess it's just basically per personal preference at that point then. Yeah, I know for me it's it's much more interesting. Yeah, and like in most most Western mythologies, it tends to be a man. But I feel like is there more variety in Eastern? Um, there, uh, I think there are also a lot of uh, male heroes in those two. But it, there's probably more variety. The ones I've seen, it's still a lot of male stuff. But in general, like regardless, it just it's just a more interesting variety, obviously, because. Yeah. Many stories already have male heroes. It's just kind of like that's been done a lot. So it's more interesting to just have a female lead. Uh, let's see here. Let's take. One. Are there any more here? Will there be horror monster designs more like the op types? Uh, definitely. Is why I answered that question because I love spooky, 
spooky crazy monsters and you know that's that's always my favorite kind of thing so I would definitely agree that especially since we were talking about Philippine mythology um, that would definitely have some of the scary elements too because there's some pretty frightening descriptions and monsters in in there so that would be cool yeah I like it if we could have some of the more than dungeons and things too like how we had it for the boss the jump scare kind of thing oh yeah yeah it's, it's cool to have like moments like that in uh, in the game so I definitely agree that more of that would be fun too. It kind of really helps mix things up and puts you on edge. They just look cool too. Yeah, yeah. It's just like it's very memorable, basically. Has Ajna considered talking to psychologist psychiatrist about the voices in her head? She's gonna have a psychiatrist uh, in PC, uh, incarnation <laughs> that ends up getting pulled into. Like I was like, oh shit, it's real. <laughs> Boyd comes in and he's like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> Obviously, yeah. these incarnations are just. <laughs> or yeah, he comes like a psych. Uh, like, you can lie, lie on the couch, like, inside her <laughs> mind to talk to him or something. That'd be good for, like. The whole conversation thing. He, he can remind you about what you're doing if you oh, play yeah. for a while. If you forgot or something, or, like, hints about, like, oh, this person needs this kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Have you considered talking to this incarnation? But yeah, I, I do feel like Ajna would probably definitely be thinking that she's going crazy at some point. Like before she understands what's going on, she's like, "Why are these? What's going on?" It's, right. It must be terribly confusing when Dar first fuses with her. It's like, "What the? What the? I was trying to get this guy, and now it's like, now, now he's like, I got him. I guess. She, she got the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was trying to kill this guy. You know, but now I don't know. Did I? <laughs> it's like, what's going on? Yeah. So. All right. It is five o'clock. Okay. Let's see. Let's do one more. Right, you want more question? question? Oh, wait, that wasn't a question. That's a state. Okay, here's one more. Alex, will there will there be weather effects such as if you're in a snow area, will you suffer from the cold and require some sort of item to stay warm? Is that? That'd be nice. We could. That would be cool. Yeah. We I, have pal technology. We could just give her all like full body. Yeah, yeah. Like she has like a, some sort of thermals types. on or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it would be fun to have things like that. Like uh, definitely the region, region areas. Like feeling like the weather here is hotter, or colder. You're like in a freaking volcano and maybe it's really hot, but then like in the and then you're like on a snowy island or something, mountain of madness or whatnot, and then it's super cold. Like one of the nice things about the making an RPG versus a fighting game is that it's a lot less assets, so we could yeah. make her give her different clothing change within the realm of possibility. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't require like two million sprites like uh, Skullgirls does for everything. Yeah. Okay, I'll do one more question and then I'll do this question. Like, how how do we get indivisible more money? I would say <laughs> um, to do that, we just definitely just spread the word. You know, like uh, if you can if you can contribute, that'd be great. But like, I think one of the key factors is just spreading spreading around to people who haven't heard yet. Um, so that would be greatly appreciated, uh, and you know, hopefully that'll hopefully this will help out. With that. So I think we are. We are about done for the stream today. I'll try to get more of the notes from here uh, online uh, pretty soon, as well as like additional stuff. You know, maybe it'll be more, more easier to comprehend when it's like more organized. Um, but yeah, you know, we can hopefully. totally like throw that into an update for the campaign too. If people are, I mean, if you want to do a Tumblr post, we can also sure, sure. I mean, these notes are kind of a mess, but <laughs> if you if you want to, to for record keeping, yeah, take a photo, take a we'll, photo, and then we'll link we'll it to the archive on sure, Twitch. Yeah. Cool, catch cool, up. awesome. All right, thanks, guys. Cool, You're all great. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. It was fun answering questions. So Don't forget glad. to tune in tomorrow at the same time, 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, for Mike's development and game stream. So, yay. Awesome. All right. Thanks cool. for thanks, watching. Guys. Thanks, guys.